Yeah, it says live on my end. What up, fools? Yo. Two, only two minutes. Uh, only two minutes late today. That ain't bad. That Not ain't that bad. bad. Considering Jalal our track must, record, Jalal must have pinched it off really quick. Good for him. No, you know what happened was we got on here <laughs> at four, and we had technical difficulties right away off the rip. But we we had a whole hour and seventeen minutes to work it out. That was it. It was great. It was great. That's what happened. Should he, instead of getting on here at four thirty, four forty five, we got on here at four. <laughs> you know, it was, Hell yeah. You know, it's always going to be an issue. Plus, we all get to take our dumps at home, so that that helps too. Oh no! We don't have we, to wait in line for that that other guy to finish up. Oh yeah, the studio <laughs> guy. God, <laughs> forgot all about him. Speaking of uh, the studio, we paid rent there this month, but. We're contemplating next month, and we've canceled Comcast. Is that correct? That is correct. All right, that's where what's we're at. The, on, what's the ahead. story? Why did why did we have to pay rent? They didn't offer any assistance. None whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I wait. I waited till the third instead of the first, because if you go to the fifth, then you have late fees. So I kind of went that happy medium, and I was like, well, let me wait till the third. Let me see if we get any, you know emails, announcements, that type of stuff, and not one. And by the way, not only did we not get any announcements, I did get one that said, hey, specifically from the property manager, your rent is late. You need to pay this immediately. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> so, uh, you know, That's unbelievable. I will, I will tell you, though, any, uh, not next ahead. month. I'm not paying next month. I'll tell you that. We didn't get to step foot in that thing. We're not allowed to step foot in that thing. Um you know, what's fair is fair. Even if Jalal and I have to do like some crazy reconnaissance bullshit, like all dressed up in black <laughs> face masks, scuba gear, oxygen tanks on the back, we're going to get our shit out of there and we're going to throw a little <laughs> finger in the air. That's what we're going to Why do. would you guys have to do some reconnaissance? Why would you guys have to go do all that? Well, if they don't let us out of our lease and, you know, just getting our stuff at, cleared out of there, if we decide not to pay, if they decide not to help us next month, we'll just see. Well, we've already, we've already paid this month. Why wouldn't we just go get the stuff out this month? Well, that's what I'm saying. No, to... right, right at the end of this month, right before next month hits, because then our stuff won't be in yeah, there if we decide well, to you know, not pay. You got to go in all black ninja mat, ninja suits. I mean, well, it just sounded cool. Sounded safe. Sounded safe with COVID nineteen. Scuba oh. gear, oxygen tanks on the back. I, I think it makes sense. Ooh, is there some water around? No, but scuba I'd rather. <laughs> what, I don't know. what do you mean scuba gear? You mean a scuba face mask? Jalal was telling me that the craziest thing he's seen, like online or Twitter or whatever, was some guy, like wrapped in scuba gear, had the scuba face mask, had the oxygen tanks on the back, just doing some regular shopping on social media. So that's what gave me the idea. I said that sounds pretty safe. Can, <laughs> that's hilarious think that, that can defeat COVID-19 we can get our that's shit. why I'm confused I was like oh, I don't understand go. scuba gear why I could understand <laughs> maybe a scuba face mask to block the corona but a full tank and flippers and everything what yeah, yeah yeah might as well huh yeah <laughs> all right <laughs> this dude has well, a full wetsuit on <laughs> dude let me give you a story so this morning um I, I had a shoe sell that I forgot that I had listed because I've just unlisted I thought all my shoes because I don't want to get out the house I don't want to. I don't want to take any risks. That's just where I'm at right now. I already took a big risk with the UPS guy. I regret that. Things are okay so far. Didn't want to take any more risks. Of course, had a shoe sell. Uh, my Yeezy 350 Cinders sold for a price that I was pretty happy with. The fact that it sold in this type of economy. Um, but I had to drop that by UPS this morning, dude. Check out what I wore. So I wore a hoodie. I had long johns under that. I had um, long john. Uh, both on, on the top and bottoms. And then I had a pair of shorts and then I had like a, <laughs> sweatpants and I had like the shittiest shoes that I ever wear. I had sanitizer in both po hand sanitizer, in both pockets. And then I had a snowboarding ski mask that you pull all the way to like just under your eyes. And I had my snowboard goggles. And then I had an actual mask that Robin made, you know, one of those DIY masks that you see all over the internet with the bandana and the plastic sheath that goes inside that you can replace whatever. I had all that on <laughs> with snowboarding gloves and dropped off my package, got a receipt, got the hell out of there within like 30 seconds. And they said, nice outfit. I said, staying healthy and got the hell out of there. 
<laughs> so you you're guys still able made... to breathe? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. A little bit. <laughs> you guys made your own masks already? You guys are already set to go? Yeah, Robin and I made uh, made our own because uh, I, I called Jalal. I was like, dude, I don't see anything on this website that you were telling us all about. And he's like, dog, I think they're sold the hell out. I was like, oh, shit. Of course, Dallas is late. You know, Dude, they the got governor... cleaned out and then they're trying to get another shipment and they're saying it's like being held at customs. There's no information Whoa. about when they're getting their stuff. They're not getting like, it, guys. The government stole it. Prob- they're probably going to, honestly. Yeah, I bet they are. What They're going to say, who, who are you? Get yeah, the government's the government the thing sold is they're, everything on Amazon. They were deemed an essential an essential store because they sell all kinds of different products. Like even before this, they've they've had stuff like that. They've always had gloves and wipes and all that. So huh. so the city is actually coming to their store and buying like they're buying for their police force. They've had the children's hospital come up there. Obviously, they're you know hooking them up with you know the best prices they can. But they're having like real government officials coming down there and and uh, buying up stuff for their, for their staff. That's so it's crazy. Been insane. That's crazy. I, uh, well, let's, we were actually, let me shout out everybody in the chat really quickly. Uh, shout out to you fools, man, for getting here early today. Didn't make you mm-hmm. guys wait too long. Let's see. St. Skinner's in here. T-Mobile, Anna Chop, Socratic Mind, Fail Beast, my man, Josh Cheek, Two Fly Daniel Eyes, Souls on My Feet, Dalton Ward, John King, Juan Delgado, killing it in the chat today swc what up ro dang ro welcome how you doing man i appreciate all you guys coming in here um so yeah we were talking all three of us were kind of talking a Did little bit before see... the show go ahead i was just gonna ask if you guys saw phil Beast's uh prison prison setup he was uh inch pressing some off of like a wooden plank your mic was cutting out a little bit. Was bench pressing what? My bad. I'm like lagging behind here for some reason. But he was bench pressing, bench pressing like some cinder blocks on top of a wooden plank. Uh uh-uh, uh, I didn't see that. <laughs> you know what? I did see that. I actually commented on it. I said, or maybe I wanted to. Dude, it, it reminded me of Karate Kid. Do you remember when uh, Mr. Miyagi goes to uh, his uh, his old friend <laughs> his old friend Sato's place, where Sato is like. Uh, trying to chop off this uh, this piece of wood that him and Mr. Miyagi found when they were kids. You remember that? That's what no. that piece of wood, yeah. that's what that. Oh man, you got to watch the Karate Kid Part Two, fool. Stop <laughs> playing. But uh, anyways, where they're in Okinawa, it's awesome. But that's that's the setup. Fail Beast looked like he looked like he had that piece of log that like that piece of wood. And he had cinder blocks on the side. I was like, this motherfucker stole that from Sato. What's up? He said in the crazy. chat that he'll come help us out. Um, if we need to steal our stuff back because he's had some black ops training. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, do you have scuba gear, though? That's a requirement. <laughs> yeah, we need some scuba gear. Um, okay, okay, tell me, or that's what I was saying. Sorry, Jalal, your thing was um, lagging behind, but I think you're, it's like caught up now. I was just saying that we were all three talking before the show, and uh, – We were kind of discussing everything as far as what's going on with each other, each of us, and maybe we can kind of update the audience on all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll, I'll start there. Basically I have to get a job. I have to get a job. Uh, And as far as how that affects you guys, or as far as that, how that affects the cast, it's really going to depend. I mean, the job is the job. Uh, I got to figure out, obviously I had a job. I was teaching at the school everything was good to go. We were in our studio. Everything was cool. Now all of a sudden we can't make merch. We can't get stuff printed. We can't, there's just a lot of things and limitations that this whole thing is wrecked for everyone. Not just obviously our show. Mm -hmm. We're just, but we're casualty of it. So I have to get a job and figure that out. So I just want to prepare you guys and let you know where the cast stands, where we stand. Um, That's my situation, fellas. I'm not sure what you guys uh, have to do or don't have to do if you want to update the audience on that. But that's what I have to do to make sure my bills are paid and to make sure everything's in order uh, without blowing through the money I have in the bank because I would be very unwise. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, man, that's that's where I'm at. So as far as the cast goes, uh, I've made the cast number one priority for so long and it just can't be anymore for me. 
I have to make that job number one priority and whatever that is, you know? So currently I'm on the hunt, man. If you guys are, um, if you're local, if you have any connects, I would like to do something creative. I would like to stay with something creative. I'm going to reach out to some radio, uh, some people in radio that I know different radio stations that I know and see if I can get in there running boards, just doing, doing whatever. I would like to stay in the field I'm in. I would like to be in radio, but if, if none of that works out, man, and I got to go dr- deliver packages or do some shit like that, I'll do it. You know, I'll do whatever I got to do. So that is the situation. No, uh, no Jersey Shore. Nice. <laughs> he's going to make a comeback. I was reading an article about Mike, the situation. That fool says he's trying to make a comeback 2020. I said Santino or whatever his name is. Yeah. Santa yeah what is- <laughs> Mike, Mike Santa, some Santa Maria. Yeah. <laughs> no sublime. Uh, but yeah, 2020 is canceled as far as I'm concerned. Ain't nobody making a comeback. People are just trying to break the fuck even, if you ask me. Breaking yeah. even is a win with this type of shit that's going on, man. So, yeah, for me, I got to tell you, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm even going to look for a job. Yes, I do. I did sell my house, and I do have money to sit on, but I'd like to invest a lot of that into properties, buy low, sell high, that kind of thing, rent high, whatever. Um, the economy is going to Oh, you're in big. such a great spot, dude. I'm so yeah. jealous, Dal. I am. Such- but, you were in dude, the most fire spot, dude. Cash is about to be king in six months. That's true. Be losing their shit. And that's the that's the thing. Like, if you guys aren't seeing where this is going, this is going, this is the whole year is gonna be wrecked. I mean, this whole year, like Dow said, is about hanging on. Can you yeah. hang on to the position you're in? Very few people are gonna be doing any leveling up this year. People are mm-hmm. trying to hang on to the rung they're on on the ladder and not get knocked down a few more rungs. If you get knocked down only a couple, good for you. You're hoping yeah. not to get sent all the way up, kick back down to the bottom. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, shit. So go ahead, Dal. I'm sorry. I just sit, was saying how envious I am of you and jealous because you're in such a great spot, man. This is awesome for you. Yeah, I'm yeah, so for pumped. sure. As excited as I am, I'm 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 happy to ha- you know help out the likes of you. I know my buddy Muzzy is getting married, uh, supposedly this year. Still, I think they were thinking September, October. Who Ooh. the f knows if that's even going to happen? <laughs> right, right. But. Uh, but, uh, you know, helping them out with their wedding if I need to. Um, so I'm happy to be able to do that, which is nice. But I also don't want to go through this money and just like pay bills with it. I'd like to invest with that, have a future in this world right now where the, the future looks very bleak. You know what I mean? But the other thing is I was thinking about it and I was like, man, I'd like to get on paper, even if it's just a small time job, even if it's just like retail, because I think that I can get back into the retail field pretty damn quick. I don't really want to. But to be on paper, to have the W-2s, to be able to take on these loans with this money where I'm paying like 15%, 20% down, maybe even as much as 30% just to have the rent where I need it to be here in the future with my future either commercial or individual properties, um, I'd like to be on paper so I can these loans aren't going to be an issue. You know what I mean? I'd like to show some sort of income. And for me, that's kind of where my head's at is like, what does the future look like? Robin's doing really well with her job right now, but as you know, franchise and Jalal knows, cause we stay close to the game, dude, the merger is official. The merger of T-Mobile and Sprint has gone through. Not only is it approved, it is official. It is done. You know, John Ledger is finishing up as being the CEO. Mike Seaver is stepping in. There's going to be a lot of changes. And I think they go hot in terms of what they're calling the new T-Mobile uh, in August. I think it's August 1st. So I think Robin is great at what she does. She is stupid smart. She is, she's amazing. But does that guarantee her spot? Does, does, is her spot eliminated? Does she get a severance? These are things that I'm not worried about, but these are things that I'm cognizant of, about, right? These are things that I've thought about with the future, right? Investing in me, investing into properties, whatever it is. Also investing into us because I can't, she can't be guaranteed that she has that position. Things get really out of whack when mergers happen. So, you know, I'm trying to think big, big picture here, not just the next six months. I'm thinking the next year, year and a half, which seems so far out because everything changes so quick day to day right now with what we're going through. But that's kind of where my head's at. So, of course, the cast doesn't take priority. Um, I wish it did. I think it's entertainment for me. It's a hobby for me. It's fun for me. It's something I look forward to. Uh, I look forward to the, the people who tune in, like the community that we've built. Those are all things that I hope that stays, but, you know, let's be real here. Um, We're, I hate to say it, we're expendable, but in terms of what we do and the money that we don't bring in, 
we have to be realistic and we're great at what we do. And I think we're awesome. And I think we're fun, but you know, priorities are changing a little bit. And I think, you know, if anybody disagreed with that, it, you know, you're wrong. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. So many, so many times, like I said, I would like to stay in a, in a creative field if I can get a job in that area. But if not, um, so many times, man, in life, my work schedule has been dictated around sports. My work schedule has been dictated around events like that. Right. And it's almost like this is a time where if you are, if you're similar to me, which I'm assuming I'm not alone in that boat. If you are like me, this is a time where you could take any, now I, you may have a job, you may not, but you could take any overtime. You could work as much as you want and just stack paper. And I think that is what I'm about to do, man. I'm about to just jam it up. Dude, I think I'm just going to try to get a job where I can get in, get a bunch of extra overtime and just grind, 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 especially, um, especially if I'm not editing stuff, if I'm not doing anything else and I can just stack during this time where there's nothing going on, there's nothing I'm missing out on. Right. That sounds awesome to me dude and you don't have a family you don't have mouths to feed you don't have kids that you need to see on the regular help out with that family stuff sure mia needs help and 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 the dog but damn dude this is this is a great time to be single to just work your ass off stack your chips and make it right because like you said you ain't missing anything from the sports world anything at all dude it's it's, it's an odd time but you're incredibly right with that yeah, dude, there's no, there's no, Philly mayor just said that in the chat, man, I've been working overtime because I do commercial lending for Philadelphia credit union and took 2000 SBA PPP loans applications today at our credit union. It's nuts, but grateful. Yeah. To take every hour of overtime, they're going to give you man, because yeah. what are you missing? I mean, your kids aren't playing sports. They ain't got no events going on. Like you're not, we're, we're not missing anything. It just, just, if you, your Netflix can wait, just grind right now, just grind right. and stack. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. That's yeah. I know it's tough. Like I said, I think we hit it perfectly. Like, fuck man, if we can just break even, if we can just like fall a couple rungs, cause everybody's going to fall. Everybody's going to lose a couple rungs. I think through this, you know, whether it's family that you lose sickness, ailments, jobs, I mean, there's just so many variables right now. If you can just break even through this stuff and just kind of almost coast in neutral a little bit and, and kind of take the dings and the bumps as they come and, and just, just keep pressing forward. I, I, shit. I think that's a win. I really do. And I didn't want to, uh, Carlos said RIP cast in the chat. I'm not <laughs> telling you it's the end of the cast, but I just want to, I always prepare you guys, you know, I don't want to pop up on you one day and be like, yo, I got a job guys. I can't do this anymore. You know, I want to let you know how, just like we've always been, man, we're very transparent with you guys. We'll let you know kind of what's going on with our money, what's going on behind the scenes, what the hell we're doing. Mm -hmm. A lot of, a lot of personal shit on here. So we're just doing the same thing, letting you know, I can't teach at the school anymore. I lost that job. I no longer have any income coming in. Like I said, we, we can't produce merch. It's just, it's a, uh, it's this, all the signs are pointing to grind, mm -hmm. work your ass off. You know what I mean? If you got a job, great. If you don't, there are places hiring. You can go get jobs. You're going to have to probably do a job that you're not used to doing, getting into a field you don't want to be in necessarily, you know, and you just got to be ready for that. But like I said, just do it. You're not missing anything. Just take a chance. This may be a time where you get into something else that you may find something you enjoy. Be like, Oh, I actually really like this. I like this company. I like whatever everyone these these are these are uh times of discovery mm -hmm. you know what i mean you're figuring out a lot about yourself in in these times a lot about who you are how you provide for your family if you have a family it's this is a lot of self discovery during these times yeah so but yeah i don't want to freak you guys out or anything or tell you we're going anywhere tomorrow but that's just kind of the direction mm -hmm. uh that the world is going. And if the people that think we're going to be back to normal in a few weeks, or we're going to be even back to normal by May or June or crazy, you know, none of this stuff's going to be back to normal. So yeah, no doubt. yeah man, I, that's, that's just where we're at. That's just where we're at. There's a lot of money to be, a lot of people are throwing up uh, job opportunities in the chat, delivery opportunities, stuff like that. There's a ton of delivery opportunities out there, man. Mm -hmm. A ton.
a ton. Dude, did you see that picture today? I think it was on Barstool Sports. They showed uh, they as somebody was recording outside of the McDonald's as they were walking by. And in that McDonald's, it was just wall to wall packages that were like all over the floor, all over the tables, all over like the side walls, you know, where you could, where you have the platforms on the side of the windows where you can put stuff up, dude, just lined with orders that needed to be delivered. It was wild. Yep. Yep. Like, that shit is crazy. Hopefully no rats got to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> no doubt. That's why I'm going curbside with any, any food. I'm going curbside. Man, um, I was looking through some. Uh, we have we have quite a few quite a few topics you want to hit on. Um, let's just start from the weekends, Dal. Mm-hmm. What did you do over the weekend? You told me you were going to watch Mania, and then I asked you in pre-show, "Hey, did you watch Mania?" He's like, "No, I didn't watch any Mania." So, what did you do over the weekend that you didn't watch Mania? Not like you missed a ton with Mania, but right, WrestleMania was it was you know I'll get it, I'll get into it. I'm anxious to hear about it. Yeah, for me, uh, weekend was pretty basic. I was a basic bitch, no doubt. Uh, Robin and I, let's see, on Saturday, what did we do? Oh, I got it. I just remembered. Uh, so I had to get – so everybody's been going live, right? You know, And, and what I want to talk about here in a bit is these Instagram kind of music battles, which I think is really entertaining, and I've loved that. Uh, we actually ended the cast getting ready to watch one. But um, Robin with Core Power Yoga, she's obviously a teacher. She teaches C2 and then sculpt at times. Um, she actually uh, taught a C2 class uh, on Core Power's yoga on their on their live stream on Saturday morning. So I got the camera uh, all positioned for her, like we cleaned the room, you know, so I was able to use some of the cast stuff that I've learned and got some production value up on her Core Power Yoga set. Wow. So that was tight. And I watched it live. And that was, I think it was like 45 minutes. And, you know, she did a great introduction. She did, you know, great with her cues and clues and, you know, her speaking was great. So it was fun, man. Cause I don't go, I've, I've been to like four of her classes. So I've seen her do it. I've seen her in action, but I haven't seen the evolution, right. Months and even years later. Um, and dude, she was exceptional. I was super proud of her. And, uh, dude, she like her chat was like more lit than ours. So I was super happy to see all these compliments that she was getting. Nobody was donating any super chat to her, unfortunately, but, uh, she killed it. That was, I was happy to see that. And then from there, we just kind of kept it basic. We took the dogs on a walk, got a little bit of vitamin D with the sun. It was pretty nice on Saturday. And then, um, uh, Saturday night, one of our favorite artists that we usually go see at the bars, his name is jo- Josh Blackburn. If you're looking for a rock guy who just slays the guitar and sings like, kind of like Joe Cocker from, you know, he sang the wonder years theme. Well, yeah, what yeah, I yeah, do yeah, yeah. if I sing out of tune? So yeah. he has this like, low smoker's voice and he just fucking shreds the guitar josh blackburn check him out um he did a facebook live he shredded for two hours dude so uh we got to kind of do that live uh live thing robin's got a puzzle uh that we're doing down downstairs it's like this wine mystery puzzle so a little bit of that and then sunday god i don't even remember dude i think we just took naps most of the day so that was kind of our weekend that sounds fun man i'm glad you got to help yeah. robin out with the production do all that stuff Oh yeah, that's it nice. Dope. So uh, Saint Skinner in the chat said, "Did Dal just fire shots at us?" I don't know what that's referring to. Do you have any idea, Dal? Were you firing? Of course shots? I do. I said because I, I said Robin's chat was way more lit than ours. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I said she didn't get didn't, she didn't get no super chat, but her chat was pretty lit, right. dude. That that yoga <laughs> that, that yoga community, man. It's a it's a strong, intense community, bro. For sure. What do you mean it was strong and intense? Like I, I mean supportive. How like, was the you know, lit? Give me oh, just very oh yeah, like oh sick blah 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 move, sick bin great practice, like all these crazy terminology that I'm not uh I'm not familiar oh, I, with. I would, they would just that. I don't I don't ever want forced like that sounds like a T Mobile group me. It was. <laughs> it was. Dude, it reminded me just the same of that. No, no, our 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 chat, our chat is the best. I don't care how many our chat is like, authentic. Our chat is very authentic. Our chat and is super fucking I love hilarious. Uh, but no, I was just amped for her and I just said, Man, you your chat was lit, you know, it was better than ours. I was just trying to build her up. Our chat is fucking our chat is the dominant factor here. We've got the better <sighs> chat. There was a lot of hyping people up that oh, yeah. yeah, I mean it's all right. Hey, there was never any, hey, Kelly, you need to get your hips up a little more on that downward dog. 
Never, never, never. Right. Of course. There was a couple of positions where I wanted to run in there and get on the live and do some stupid movements, like get behind Robin, <laughs> like some doggy style action. You know, whoa, oh, whoa. Some what? Not, not like, not in the flesh, but like do some, do some <laughs> funny moves and just be hilarious. But cause I was in the room, I, I had the dogs locked in there so the dogs wouldn't get in the way. Uh. And I just wanted to go in there and break, like, uh, break the monotony up a little bit, but uh, you know, I didn't, I held it together. That's funny. Dow trying to mess up the bag from John King. <laughs> yeah, Look no at doubt. That. That's hilarious. John King, man, uh, I was following his socials here. That fool is cleaning his whole room, showing his whole collection of like shoes, clothing collection, all his polos and J's, just to let you know he is the real polos and J's. There's no other polos and J's. He is polos and J's. That fool was breaking out some uh, pack sun denim, all kinds of crazy shit, man. I've learned a lot about our people here. Thank you to the most underrated podcast. Oh, John King. Uh, send me – this fool was bragging on American Eagles jeans. I like hear they're super, really good too. Dude, super I hear pumped awesome. about it. Yeah, Which I pairs? Awesome. I, need, I, need, I need you to shoot me the pairs that you bought because I can't go to a store. So I'm over here on the website, and uh, I just need – yeah, what, what, what models – if you will, what, what's the right terminology? What am I looking for here, Dal? What, uh, uh, like the, just the gene model. What styles? Gene? Yeah. What styles? styles. There we go. Yeah. yeah. The what, cut, the cut maybe. Yeah. What's, what's the cut guy? Send yeah. me the, send, send you all, all the boot cuts. <laughs> John, John King definitely ain't wearing no skinny pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, they looked good. I saw him on his IG. I saw him doing some modeling. Huh? That's tight. Except man. for John sure. King. They are amazing in the chat. Wow. Assless chaps for Jalal, Chase said. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody want to see that. If he, wears, if, he, if he wears his assless chaps like he wears his Jordan 1s, I'm out. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, I'm out. That's hilarious. Uh, okay, Dal, WrestleMania over the weekend. That's yeah. what I did over the weekend. It was a two-day two -day event. I've been taking my dog for rollerblading. I've been going hitting the skates, hitting the rollerblades with the I dog. That. So That's I hit that right. over the weekend. Yeah, that was on Instagram. If you uh, if you follow me on there, you get some, you get a chance to check out some premium content that is yeah, you not on do, YouTube or anywhere else. You should do an OnlyFans. I should. Yeah, you and John King. Yeah, not together, but you know Whoa. John King with his with his <laughs> collection of jeans, and then you with your rollerblade sessions with Benny. I think OnlyFans. It's it's deserving. <laughs> I, I think i'll just put that content up for free on the ig oh okay but who, so tell who me knows? this wrestlemania yeah, yeah. wrestlemania 36 two nights number one was it worth two nights what was the point of two nights the car didn't seem that intensely great we had people pulling out we had things happening right because of the life that we're in the new life that we all live why two nights and as a wrestling fan yourself, was it worth the two nights? Here's what I'll say. Uh, why the two nights? The two nights was so that they could stretch it out because there's nothing else going on. And okay. that way they could give more superstars a chance to appear at WrestleMania. They usually try to do that anyway. The shows have gone from a three and a half hour show, three, three and a half to four, four and a half now to five, exceeding five the past couple of years. They knew they couldn't just do eight hours. So they're like, oh, well, let's just break it up into two nights and do four hours each night and give them more programming. You can't mm -hmm. do eight hours in one sitting. So with, it was because of the fact that nothing else is going on and they got there's no football stadium involved anymore. They're kicked out of Raymond James down in Tampa where they were going to do it, right. home of the Buccaneers. That's where it was <laughs> supposed to be hosted. So that's why two nights. What was the other question? I'm sorry. And then uh, two nights and then – what was the other question? You said it was it worth two nights. I'm was sorry, I was really nights? trying to answer your questions before yeah, I got to my take and my thought. I'm sorry, <laughs> Dallas. I'm sorry. Yeah. And was it, I guess, was it all was it was it all cracked up to be oh maybe that's what it like, was. Yeah, what it was it was it worth worth was it worth salvaging, you know, because like they could have was it worth like, doing it, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what it was. Sorry. Uh 
they still should they should have postponed the event. Everything yeah. I said from the beginning, they should have postponed the event. I, they didn't need to go on with it. It wasn't necessary. What no one was like, oh man, it's gonna be bummed. So many writers on the dirt sheets were, which are internet wrestling blogs, the I, the uh, IWC, Internet Wrestling Community, is what that stands for. The IWC was all saying cancel the show. Gotcha. They were all like, hey, just postpone the show, move the show. Like I said, AEW moved blood and guts. They just were like, yo, we're not going to be able to deliver the show we want. The crowd is such a big part of it. We're canceling the show or we're postponing mm-hmm. the show. They should have just postponed the show. Vince has always had this, the show must go on mentality. And it's worked for him in a lot of scenarios. This scenario it did not work, in my opinion. Gotcha. I thought the show fell flat. And here's what I don't understand. I, I watched the show Saturday night. I turn on the radio Sunday morning on Sirius XM and there's a a wrestling show on Sirius XM called busted open. I'm giving them promotion here. Uh, Bully Ray or Bubba Ray Dudley, a former WWE wrestler is on the show with a gentleman named Dave LaGreca. He's just like a wrestling fan. He started the show. So bullies his Mm co-host. These guys are sucking so much dick. WWE just saying how, this is this was one of a, a very memorable WrestleMania. This was great. The Undertaker AJ Styles Boneyard match was awesome, and it lived. It exceeded their expectations. All this stuff, and I'm like, I'm up. I'm sitting literally up here in the loft, drinking coffee in the morning, uh, doing some work on my computer, and listening to the show. And I'm yelling. My my girl's downstairs. She's like, what are you? I'm yelling back to the radio like this is unbelievable if you guys are gonna do a wwe fluff show go to w go on the wwe network i don't watch all i don't watch many of the products on wwe network because i know they're just up wwe's ass it's not authentic content to me you guys are doing a show on sirius xm and i know you i know bubba used to be wwe but he's been on the show he shit on wwe before and i don't know if something's changed i haven't listened to the show in quite a while but I don't think we watch the same event or you, they are just wanting to make sure they continue to get big name guests from WWE on their show. So that was the take they had. I, d- I didn't see that at all. I thought the wrestling was subpar at best. I thought I can understand the people saying they did their best in this scenario. I get that. And I agree. They did the best they could in this scenario, but I'm going to tell you what the best they could is still not a great product for the fan to watch. It's a lot of, uh," or in the women's matches, them screaming and yelling and moaning. And it's just overly loud and obnoxious. I had to turn my TV volume down to five to watch the entire show just so Hmm. I could barely faintly hear the commentators because the, the falling of in an empty arena and the eh, 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 in an empty arena is just too much for me. It's not enjoyable to watch. It doesn't make the product enjoyable. The only things I enjoyed, I enjoyed the Kevin Owens, uh, Seth Rollins match. And that's because there was a little bit of brutality. They took it out the ring and Kevin Owens took a crazy bump off the WrestleMania sign through a table. Um, so I thought that was, gave me intrigue. The Orton edge match had me a little confused. I don't know if I enjoyed it or just kind of kept watching because it kept dragging on. My girlfriend said multiple times, this is still on. This is still on. This is still going on. So it must've gone on for quite a while. I was just kind of watching and I was unimpressed. Uh, The thing I was unimpressed there, they just brawled all over the arena. There was no moves. No one took a suplex onto the truck. No one took a move anywhere. It was just a lot of punching and kicking. And this was was odd because this was Edge's first match in like nine years, right? Right. Right. There wasn't moves on anything until the very end when they got up on this top of this semi truck and they did a couple moves on there where the Hmm. match kind of commenced, if you will. But overall, yeah, match was subpar to me. It was okay. Wasn't the worst. Wasn't like, like I said, some of the, some of the women's matches unwatchable. Some of the, uh, uh, the Bobby Lashley match, unwatchable. The King Corbin match, unwatchable to me. I just, I, you know how I do, Dal. I watch everything on delay. I record right. it. I jump in about an hour late. It's exactly what we did. My lady and I were watching Ozark. We're about 
six, seven episodes deep in the first season. I highly recommend it to you guys. If you have not checked out Ozark, it's great so far. We are enjoying that. Uh, So we just watched, I was like, here, let's just fire up Ozark. We watched an episode when WrestleMania was starting. So then I was just an hour into the show and I just started clicking through and fast forwarding each night because I knew, I just knew what I was going to get. So that's what it was. I didn't really enjoy the Boneyard match that much. I didn't enjoy, uh, I didn't enjoy any of that. Hmm. Yeah. What about the, what about the 24, uh, 24, seven match? With obviously Gronk oh my taking, God. T- taking the ship here. What the uh, stupidest. Tell, tell, tell me about that. The dumbest. Rob was, I'm not a fan of Rob's. Well, it's not even Rob, dude. It's like the, because he has that, you know, party boy. Yeah. That's kind of been his image before. Obviously, WWE is now taking that and running Capitalizing. with it. Like they do everything. They just try to, it's, they're basically taking that and turning it up to a thousand. <laughs> and it's awful. It's awful. Mm. He's coming off like he's drank 20 Red Bulls, way over hyped. Just too crazy for me, dude. Not my not my style. Gotcha. Um, but I get it. I mean, he's never really done a hosting gig like that before. And now you're in front of live TV in front of people. But I feel like he had an advantage because they could redo as much of that stuff as they wanted. Pretty much. I mean, it's not live TV. A lot of that was edited together. Hmm. You know? Gotcha. So well. So do you regret wasting your time then? I mean, Ozark, dude, we're Robin and I are through season one. I think they just either, I think season three just came out. And I think people are just getting finished. I can't remember exactly, but we're through season one. We haven't watched any of season two yet, but man, Jason Bateman, he's a whole different guy in that, isn't it? Isn't he incredible in that so far? Yes, dude. Ozark totally. So sick, dude. Yep. Yep. Very, very big fan. How far are you guys? Uh, we're through season one. So we Through have season not started one. season two yet. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. When did you guys start it? Uh, about six months ago. We were just kind of watching it like really sporadically just here and there. Um, but dude, what a, what a great show to, to, to binge the hell out of during this time. For sure. It's well worth it. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to uh, get more into it. We're six in and we're locked. We're locked in. We're definitely locked in. Nice. Uh, they were Anything asking more- about um, some of the other matches. Dude, the, the, I was looking forward to the Brock Lesnar Drew McIntyre match, the main event, the championship. That shit was so disappointing. It was again, obviously the empty arena didn't help. But dude, they literally just did finishing moves to each other over and over in the ring. Like mm. Brock Lesnar gave Drew McIntyre two or three F fives, and then somehow he gets power. He comes back and gives him two or three Claymores, kicks. It's just like, and that. <laughs> That was the end of the match. Oh, yeah, a couple of German suplexes from Lesnar, maybe. And that was it. It was very, very weak. It was huh. Terrible. The Goldberg Braun Strowman match from the night before, terrible. Another that was terrible, terrible well, just huh? squash match. They both went like, it felt like three minutes, dude. It was, wow. they just were not even. And I'm not saying you want to see Goldberg in there for a 10 minute match. You don't. <laughs> you saw what happened last, last year when he dropped Undertaker on his head. Yeah. He just doesn't have that's, the stamina to do a 10 minute match. That's Robin's but, nightmare. Dallas, Dallas going three minutes. That's, that's her worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you use that one last show? I something don't know. Maybe like that. <laughs> May, maybe something like that. Maybe. maybe. Did you guys see the vice beyond the ring on new Jack crazy? You'll love it. That hour was better than 10 hours of WWE from Garrett in the chat. Oh my gosh. I tweeted mm-hmm. that out. I said I woke up early and watched the New Jack thing at like 5.30 in the morning. You know, my lady, we couldn't sleep, woke up all early, watched the New Jack thing. Holy shit, that guy. Did you, did you see that, Dallas? No, I've heard of it. I've watched trailers for it. Uh, I'm all hyped on it, but I haven't been able to watch it yet. Dude, it is. It's disturbing, bro. If, even, if, even if, like, it's disturbing to anyone. If you're a wrestling fan, if you're a non-wrestling fan, it is a disturbing piece on a guy that i knew about in the 90s i was up on new jack a little bit but i didn't know i never really watched him in ecw i didn't watch these matches i had just heard about incidents so when you watch this documentary and they have actual footage of the matches not reenactments not just people telling you what's happening you're watching these incidents take place in the ring and you're like how is this guy not sitting behind bars Mm. it is 
a wild ride. The new Jack, uh, the new Jack Vice documentary. That's crazy. Wild ride. So yes, Garrett, I did watch that. I rec. I, I don't even know if I recommend you guys check it out. Check it out at your own at your own leisure. Uh, Skinner was telling me he watched it too, and he was just like, "It's so crazy how New Jack showed no remorse for the things he did in the ring as well." You watch the, uh, you watch the documentary. He's interviewed there for it. He's sitting there. The guy interviews him about multiple incidents. No remorse whatsoever, dude. No remorse. John King, I used to watch Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and I can remember being a kid, like how they are getting, how are they getting away with this? Dude, I never, and see, Smokey was back in the, for people that are not up on wrestling, before Vince McMahon came through and bought up all these territories and formed the WWF, there was all these different wrestling territories. There was the NWA, there was Smoky Mountain Wrestling, there was all these small little places, Florida Championship Wrestling, different places throughout the country. And that's how wrestlers would make money. A wrestler would be an, almost like an independent contractor, like an Andre the Giant way back in those days. And he would go around to different promotions. Now, uh, in early in Andre's career, that's how he worked. By the middle of his career, WWF was forming. Vince McMahon had kind of latched on to Andre. He had become contracted to Vince, and Vince would almost rent him out to these smaller promoters, almost like the circus, dude. And Andre huh. would go wrestle so-and-so down here in Florida, and he'd go wrestle so-and-so here in Georgia, championship wrestling, and he'd be over here in Smoky Mountain. And they'd go through these territory systems, and that's how they'd make their money. And But Andre was one of the first big stars to be like contracted to Vince, and Vince would kind of loan him out as an attraction because people knew every, on, everyone wanted to see Andre. Anyone, Andre could wrestle anyone, and it would generate money. So, mm -hmm. you know, Andre was a big draw. So in a similar way, so yeah, he's talking about Smoky Mountain Wrestling, which was just a small, small territory, and that's where New Jack started, dude. And they're and John King is talking about. He's like, I can wonder how they're getting away with this, dude. They're 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 using the N word like crazy, like white folks calling New Jack the N word, New Jack saying I'm the N word, like playing into that whole role, and that's mm -hmm. what kind of sparks this racial tension. It, dude, it's a weird, it's a crazy, it's wild, bro. You got to check and it out. But New when, Jack is when was that? To, when was that based that? out of like the eighties, the early eighties, yeah. late seventies? Yeah. No, not 70s, or, probably no, uh, 80s, late yeah. 80s. If, jo if, if John King was said he was like younger. Late 80s, school. early 90s was, yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Um, yeah, dude. It was, uh, man, it was, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, y'all mean y'all don't have $5 for the cast? Did you throw your chain, throw away your change jar <laughs> from Chase? <laughs> Nice. Chase. I never really got into wrestling, but I love hearing TTF geek out on this. Ryan Morgan. Thanks, bro. Nice. I never know if people that are, are in, not into wrestling are annoyed by this or not. I try to explain things the best way I can. I'm so fascinated with wrestling because obviously I, I grew up on it as a kid, and Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan and the late 80s, early 90s and what it turned into and what it grew into. And then obviously by the time that was when I was a young kid. And then by the time I was 10 11 years old wrestling was huge nwo had exploded and everything was so big wrestling was that brought a bunch of kids like i had already been in the game five years i i was 10 years old i've been watching since i was five that brought a whole new audience you know that wasn't it or actually i guess i had been in the game probably 10 years because nwo didn't come around until i was it was between 12 and 14 somewhere around there so i already been in the game seven years it brought a new audience in but i just love the I started watching at a young age and I love all the behind the scenes stuff. I love the behind the scenes uh, words and verbiage that they use. I love all the old stories. I love how the business has transformed from wrestlers being on the road and just jamming into cars and going city to city and getting paid 50 bucks a night to wrestle and, and, and then it evolving and them making their names in bingo halls and empty gymnasiums and shit it's just a, such a people that have a short-sighted view of wrestling just it's oh it's fake that's their oh it's fake it's stupid it's choreographed it's scripted they don't understand the struggle it takes to make it to the mm -hmm. big leagues it's just like people going through the ML, a minor league mlb system actually way worse because you're treated like shit where you were back in the day and you're forced to do all this extra work and this extra bumping and this extra, take these extra shots. 
that you're not going to really take in the ring, but they want to see if you're tough enough. They want to see if you're tough enough to make it on the road. You have what it takes to be in the business. Can you listen? Can you earn the respect of the veterans? Because they put in their time. And that's what it was. It was just such a, that's what I love about it, dude. That's what I love about it. I love the struggle of a wrestler. There's no, there's, it's no, it's not coincidence that there's so many re- legendary wrestlers that have died before the age of 40. It's an oh, extremely yeah. hard life and hard business. And that's what fascinates me. I was never man enough to want to try, but I did want to try so bad, but I wasn't, I was never going to go on the road. I wasn't going to move to Florida. I wasn't <laughs> going to go start, you know what I mean? Like start bumping and up gymnasiums, but I would love to get in it these days as a talker just for a wrestler that's really, really good, but he can't do anything or he can't uh, do anything on the mic. He can't, doesn't have promo right. skills. I would like to go in there and develop a character just to talk and be his hype man. Like a Paul Heyman is the Brock Lesnar. That's how I can see myself getting in the business or as a commentator. Mm. So I well, still have I, that fascination. I still I have that fascination in that dream. I would definitely let you be my Paul Bearer. Ooh, Paul oh, Bearer. <laughs> that, still the worst Paul Bearer I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> tried how about we do how about we go over some super chat man let's do uh misha 499 f the quarantine oh thank action. you misha and then uh let's see who else did we have in there i think it was chase was next five dollars everybody put five on it for the cast yeah he's got five on it thanks bro hell yeah he's got five on it and then the last one lorenzo he says TTF, who's your most underrated wrestler ever? Renzo, what's good, bro? Um, most underrated wrestler ever. Oh, gosh, that is so tough. That is very, very tough. Hey, Elizabeth, uh, sit your ass down, Elizabeth. I'm sorry, I can't do that one either. <laughs> Dude, I can, name, I can probably give you, that's what's crazy, is I can probably give you 10 overrated wrestlers just off the top, like guys that are so overrated, but underrated, who really, man. Let me get back to you on that, bro. Let me, just, let me dissect that for a minute. Let me think about that. I don't want to leave that short-sighted. I don't want to give you a bullshit answer. Let me think about it. Yeah. Uh, Brian Jackson, question to TTF. Would you like football, baseball, basketball as much if you knew it was scripted? No. No. I don't think so. I don't think so. That's what the intrigue of it. So I don't look at wrestling as a sport. I look at it as my, like an art. The entire thing together is an art. So what makes you great is your can you obviously wrestle in the ring? Can you take the bumps? Can you do the cool shit? Can you, can you um, bring fans in? And then can you talk on the mic? Do you know how to draw them in with their emotions? Do you know how to get them to hate you? Do you know how to get them to love you? Do you have them eating out of the palm of your hand, a crowd of 62,000 people when you need them to? That's the stuff that makes you a great wrestler, and you need it all to be great. You got to be able to perform in the ring and perform in the ring. I mean, there's guys like ultimate warrior that were huge stars for a blip of time and a blip on the radar, but they're very unsafe in the ring. They were crazy. They couldn't handle it. So the guys that are truly, truly great, they're safe in the ring. They don't hurt their opponents. They don't get them hurt. They don't put them in danger, but yet they still make you believe that what they're doing in that ring is real. It is real. And they're drawing emotion from you. And that's the art of it. That's a great wrestler. So um, I hope that, I hope that answers, uh, answers the question. That's what's different. It's art. It's not sports. Sports, I want, I want uh, competition. In wrestling, I'm not necessarily looking for competition. It's a part of the equation, but I like the art form. Uh, looking through the rest of the chat here. Damn, everyone's going crazy with the wrestling talk. I used to go to Blockbuster and grab all the wrestling VHSs to watch rewind and then watch again gives me goosebumps thinking of the good old days the tlc days hardy boys my favorite mm-hmm. taylor toadvine good one good one for sure yeah it's dude people saying in the chat uh, i've seen that multiple times wrestling is an acquired taste completely is dude. totally mm-hmm. an acquired taste because you have to and that's why i think as a young you have to almost like it as a young kid and then grow up with it into your adulthood because as a young kid there's your parents are telling you it's not real but in your head you're still like there's something real here 
something about this is real. And then as you grow up and you start to learn more about the business and that curtain is peeled back, you start to see, holy shit, there is so much of this business that is real. These bumps are real. These bruises are real. This back injury, this neck injury, this painkiller addiction, this road life, all this shit is real as hell. It's completely real. And it's, it's something that everyone thinks is bullshit. Everyone thinks is fake. It's not. The only thing that's fake is the outcome. And maybe some of the, some of the punches and kicks. But a lot of nights, you're actually ex- accidentally getting tagged with the right. You're accidentally taking a boot to the face. You're getting dropped on your head. You know what I mean? Like, it's not all hugs and Hallmark cards. And that's what I love. Well, then the most underrated has got to be Mick Foley. That's it. Mic drop. Bye. Mick Foley. I love Mick Foley. I don't think... Dude, Foley's not underrated. He's in the WWE Hall of Fame. He, that dude, when he got thrown off the top of that cage as, that's, as Cactus that's what, Jack against Undertaker, I mean, that that's what reminded him me of that. The, yeah. The superstardom that Bradest took him dude. from, I mean, he was, he was big at the time, but that just, that took him off the charts. It put him into Stone Cold territory, the Rock mm-hmm. territory. You know what I mean? It just took him to the next level, man. I talk about a guy that's messed up these days. Holy shit. Yeah. The whole Darren. wrestling being oh, fake thing, the whole wrestling being fake thing didn't really bother me until we went to go see SmackDown live. Uh-huh. That just kind of ruined it for me because it's like in my head, I can, I can kind of let that illusion stay alive, but the, the live just ruined it when they went to commercial break and the guys were just like kind of sitting there in the dark waiting around. Right. It was too weird. I always tell people, if you're going to go see a show, go see a pay-per-view or go see a live show. Don't go see a televised, like a SmackDown or a Monday Night Raw or anything like that. What I loved, Jalal, I don't even know if I told you guys this. When I went to AEW a few weeks ago, they do it completely different than WWE during commercials and shit. And it is so sick, which AEW is doing everything better than WWE right now. So I shouldn't be shocked. But, dude, what they did is they would have Cody Rhodes, like one of the founders of w- or AEW, come in there and he'll, like, do a Q&A, dude. Like – do a Q&A with the audience or he'll tell a story about his dad Dusty Rhodes like he'll tell a wrestling story from the road he'll tell like and he'll make it into a really cool thing and he'll be because he'll he'll pop into the ring and be like what's up Denver how you guys doing we're in commercial right now but I'm gonna tell you guys a quick or whatever he'll have someone on the on the side like he can interact with her he'll see a sign in the crowd and he'll fucking point the, out their sign and then he'll go mm-hmm. off on that and it was super cool the way he did it and he would have it wrap up right at the end and be like, all right, man, we're coming back to TV in 10 seconds. They're going to count you down in five and I need you guys to be live. And then boom, dude, five, four, three, and then boom, and we're back live on TNT, you know, and then boom, the whole show starts again. And it was just super sick the way that AEW did it all. I think the that way seems WWE, like something you could do. What's that? That seems like the perfect job for you. Oh, bro. I just need to get, I think I need to move to Florida. That's what I was saying the other day. I got to move down to Florida. You got to go to full sale or get in with like NXT, get in that whole, whole system there. Uh, maybe that's what I should do during this time. Just sell everything and move down to Florida. If I'm already going to get a job slinging packages anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where's the guest I house, think- John King? John King. <laughs> He's got the you got guest a basement? House. Where's the basement? Uh, yeah, man. Orlando's really, really the hub, the epicenter of it. So that's what it uh that's what it probably take it's funny when i was working at that broadcasting school um it was funny i was looking through the internship board and dude they were asking they wanted uh people on there to like go run camera interns to come run camera for like a denver pro wrestling or i forgot what the uh the company is called but there's some kind of wrestling school here and they put on their own shows on like friday nights they have it on camera they have like they stream it i guess and I was like, damn, maybe I should go hit those fools up and just uh, jump in there and see who's doing their announcing. If they got a spot, you got a spot on the roster. Let me just, let me just go through, at least get a little bit of, get my feet wet before I made the jump to Orlando or whatever. Hmm. Yeah, but, I could totally see you doing something like that. Uh, man, I, I saw these two dudes come out last night that were wrestling on the main card, and I was just like, these guys right here, dude, this is, I could do, I could do, five different gimmicks i could do this gimmick very well though it's uh yeah man it's just something that it's something that i've always wanted to do for sure for sure um i'm good on the wrestling i don't want to waste it i don't want to go too <laughs> too crazy everyone in the chat's going crazy though one hell of a promo ttf no mercy was the best wrestling game ever smackdown here comes the pain is a close second 
Attitude Era was amazing. I had the privilege to grow up on WCW and WWF. You love wrestling. Uh, mine is Sting or Val Venus. Renzo, Val Venus? Hello, ladies. And he used to, do you guys remember Val Venus? He used to just come out in the towel. He used to have a towel wrapped around him all the time, and he would kind of do the ravishing Rick Rude thing. Huh. The little, the little, <laughs> yeah, dude. And his name was Val Venus because it rhymed with penis. And he was like this supposed to be this sexual character. It was like in the 90s attitude era when things were getting raw. That reminds me, that reminds me a little bit of Gold Dust. That reminded me of the Triple H. I kind of mixed it a little bit Triple H in there. But yeah, maybe <laughs> no Gold Dust is uh damn dude. I was just watching an old Gold, Gold Dust, Dust is the worst, promo man. the other oh day. God. I got down a rabbit hole on YouTube. Uh, watching a goal and dude, I was telling that lady about Marlena because dude, Marlena Goldust's lady used to date New Jack. That's how I got down that rabbit hole. Goldust's <laughs> wife, bro, her name is Terry Runnels. Goldust's real name is Dustin Runnels. Uh, he married this lady named Terry Runnels. She was his valet or manager for a long time. You remember her? She used to come out and sit in the director's chair, smoke the cigars, super tanned. Hot, uh, hot chair. I don't remember. Oh, I'm sure it'll all come back if I watched it, but I don't remember. You ain't a fan fool. You ain't a fan fool. (laughs) You ain't a fan fool. I was young, young. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. All right. I'll give you that. But yeah, anyway, she used to, uh, she used to, she was married to Goldust and I don't even know what happened, but they ended up getting divorced and somehow she ended up with New Jack for a period of time. And there's like videos of New Jack on the internet, like talking about, uh, Bone and Terry and all this other like craziness, dude. Just crazy New Jack shit. So New Jack's a, a maniac anyway, as I was telling you guys from the Vice documentary. But yeah, dude. Wild, wild shit. Gold dust. Big Papa Pump shits turds like Valvinus. <laughs> Big Papa <laughs> Pump, dude. Was Did you guys ever hear the rumor? Or maybe it's not a rumor. Maybe it's an actual true story. Big Papa Pump got his bicep uh, tendons cut at certain points, so his biceps would pop up like that, so they would look. <laughs> Go Google Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner right now, and you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see him flexing, dude, and his biceps just look ungodly, unreal, like just not natural. You don't get that, and that's what I always heard was the the story I heard was he got his bicep tendons cut, and Jeez. it gave him that that pump, dude. It gave him, and do you remember that, or do you uh, see that now? yeah for pump. sure yeah dude his his man his arms are sick dude that's crazy. right ridiculous yeah, ridiculous dude. so yeah dude that guy that guy is uh that guy's crazy big papa pump scott steiner <laughs> i like all his nicknames superstar the big bad booty daddy big papa pump <laughs> the genetic freak white thunder <laughs> freakzilla <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the genetic freak and wow. freaks, Freakzilla. Yeah, he used to wear at the end of his career. He started wearing this like metal, metal uh, headdress thing that it was. Yeah, it was. It's weird. Yeah. It was nuts. Or John King, Orlando after COVID, most underrated meetup. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be sick. Come down there, yeah. Come down there. Do a little wrestling. Is wrestling comparable to monster trucks? Good comment, Chase. I, the only thing comparable I would say is the crowd, the redneck aspect of it. But I don't know. You could argue that wrestling has kind of grown out of that redneck aspect. But a guy like Jalal would argue that's not very true because we sat second row at SmackDown and he was getting <laughs> stunk out from every angle. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys ever heard it depends that story. on the brand, but oof. Oof, he said, oof. Got that stankonia. <laughs> I just it just hit my nose again. The the memory of it and then just got that got a smell of it. That BO. Ugh, terrible. Philly Mayor, <laughs> the Steiner brothers were the big blue guys from Michigan. Dude, yeah, I have a Steiner Brothers Michigan t-shirt. And that's how I knew the Steiner Brothers. I knew the Steiner Brothers came into WCW. I saw and they came in from like world class. I think it was like world class championship wrestling, like a real like I was telling you, one of these territory spots. Then WCW got going. Steiners were in there. And dude, they used to come out in Michigan letterman jackets. They used to wrestle in singlets, like real wrestling singlets. Uh his um, not Papa Pump, but his brother Rick 
Rick Steiner had wrestling earmuffs that he would have on during the ring. And they were a tag team. And they were actually like real deal collegiate wrestlers. Like if you look at Scott's Wikipedia, I'm pretty sure you're going to find some sick collegiate wrestling stats at Michigan. So they were real deal collegiate wrestlers. And then so they just took that gimmick into real life. Where it really got all flipped around in WCW, Scott Steiner joined the NWO and he formed this alter ego. He turned on his brother, kind of like Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty uh, in the early 90s from the Rockers. And he got crazy, dude. He just started to get roided the hell out. He's, look at the progression of Scott Steiner. Look how he used to look. Google Scott Steiner in the 80s. He has long hair. He's big, but he's not roided out like that. And he's like collegiate wrestler style. And then you look at him in the 2000s and the late 90s. Holy shit, dude. He's roided out, bro. Just roided out the cra- dog face gremlin Rick. I forgot about the dog face gremlin. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, look that guy up, bro. <clears throat> uh, only OGs remember TNA. Dude, TNA got... TNA was still cracking for like TNA was still going with the the broken Matt Hardy gimmick right up until they died right up until until the end there. And then WWE tried to bring it over and shit the bed, but now Matt's with AEW, so I think he's going to do really really well over there. Scott cut the mullet and picked up on the roids. Yep, Skinner, it's mm-hmm. exactly what happened. Dal, you're a little quiet. Got to yeah. drop the kids off. <laughs> no i'm i just don't know a lot about wrestling that's just you know I'm, I'm being educated as as it comes and as it goes but don't get it twisted i'm looking things up like i just looked up the steiner brothers and you're exactly right the headpiece that protects the ears his brother's wearing <laughs> and 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 then the other fool you know big bob pump uh scott steiner has the big ass mullet dude no facial hair yep because remember he always had that like long trail. blonde yeah 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 the long either diet, blonde or brown yeah diet black yeah so black, yeah, yeah man i'm i'm just uh i'm doing some research and uh just learning as we go as well we'll move on dal but uh first before we do that T- taylor wants to know dal are you pounding pepsi or bud light i ah, got you it uh it is it is a pepsi unfortunately uh i i love i still love my soda pops every once in a while but uh this one is the incorrect one not to give pepsi some publicity but uh this is the one with made with real sugar robin did an instacart order yesterday thank goodness. I appreciate the Instacarters and I appreciate Robin. Uh, but instead of regular Pepsi, she got the one with the, uh, the real sugar, the real cane sugar, which is probably better for you, but it tastes like shit to me, but I'm still putting it down. Thank you, Robin. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you, Robin. Thank While you. we're on uh, combat sports in a sense with wrestling, move me with, uh, tell me about the update with the UFC and uh, UFC 249. Yeah. So, like, well, so uh, Dana White came to his own Twitter account today and, you know, Dana, a man of his word, uh, came to it and said, hey, the fight is signed and it's 100 percent on uh, somewhere wow. on earth. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, smile emoji. So he is a man of his word. He is sticking to what it, he says. Come hell or high water, come anything. We are doing this fight. This card is happening. And today on his social media, he posted that along with a picture of Tony Ferguson wearing his hat frontwards, his weird gloves on, and he's literally doing an electronic signature on his phone. It's just to prove that the signature is done. The fight is ready to go. And of course, he is fighting Justin Gaethje on April 18th. ESPN Plus pay-per-view, be there. It is the interim lightweight belt obviously because Khabib is not going to give up his belt it's just going to be an interim thing till Khabib can obviously defend but uh what this tells me is one Dana White is a man of his word and I can appreciate that um I think he is the premium uh marketer on the planet he is the UFC you remember what he did obviously being uh Chuck Liddell's manager you know doing all this stuff having the relationship with Tito putting that together, making those two gentlemen the face of what the UFC was and needed to be at that time. Um, He is just a premium marketer. He was a great manager for a lot of these fighters in his past, and he sticks to to his guns. And he has obviously made the UFC a lot of money. Uh, He made the the brothers that he was invested in uh, a lot of money. And I got to tell you, nobody knows where this fight is going to be, though. He he was very, very uh, quick 
to dodge the question of where it's going to be. Um, it's just when it's going to be, it is happening. We've got signatures. Um, that's what we know thus far, but I think it just reminds you that the UFC is big business, right? We look at like, how, how would Khabib feel right now? You know, somebody who's kind of trapped in Russia. He was obviously overlooked pretty quick. As soon as the UFC says, yo, you can't make it. You can't leave. Cool. We're on to the next, we're on to the next person, you know? So it's like next man up. And it just, it's like a life lesson, you know, anybody in their work uh, with Corona, with what's going on, anybody in this world is replaceable at any given moment. And that's, what's crazy to me. I feel bad for Khabib and his team, um, but at least they're not given they're, They are considering it an interim lightweight belt. Um, so I think that's fair, but Khabib's obviously got to be pretty sore, uh, you know, sore about this whole thing, but the games shall move on and they continue. So that's the latest. Skinner in the chat says UFC live from the performance center. And that alludes to the question I was just going to ask. Do you think that, there, why is it? Why can WWE just continue along on schedule and put on an event? And UFC is having so much trouble. What's the reason for that? It's it's tough to answer that. You know, I, with the traveling restrictions, stipulations, um, I think the testing. But you look at you know the wrestling federation, like they have to have proven refs. They have to have they have to fly certain people in. They have to keep people separate as much as they can they had to do a two-night endeavor i don't i don't really know i just think it has to be legalities between how they operate versus one one versus the other i would think but i'm not i'm thinking sure. about it and i'm thinking about a couple different factors number one is the performance center which he mentioned there wwe owns their own building dude <clears throat> vince being smart enough to set that entire thing up over there they own the building he employs everyone Everyone that's on the cards employed by WWE, he doesn't have to get a third part, uh, a referee that's sanctioned by the state of or Florida, whatever, where the, yeah. you know, where their performance, they don't have to do any of that. So I think that's a lot easier from that, uh, from a logistics standpoint and a performance center. I think, I think uh, St. Skinner's right on track there. The other thing, I think the stigma, I think the fact that wrestling already has a kind of eh, whatever stigma to it. It, and it's not a real sport anyway and blah 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 the backlash isn't as heavy for them to just continue on with wrestlemania versus the backlash that ufc and the red tape that usc is fa uh, ufc is facing yeah i think it's probably just like the commissions that sanction obviously these ufc fights I've, it's got to be uh something with uh the state commissions i would think there's probably legalities within that and that's where that's would be my answer without knowing for sure so in the in the in the chat they're saying doesn't it have to be sanctioned? So is that the issue? I don't know. Are they having an issue getting it? Is that or is the is the uh, the states athletic are the state athletic commissions saying no? We're not holding this right now. Is that the problem? Well, I know Nevada has came out and said they're not holding it, so that's why they can't do it. But all the other there. Ones but I would say, so I'd say, yes, the answer to that is yes. Cause all for the example, states are on the same platform. That's why they're yeah. looking at play Abu Dhabi and other spots around the world. Yeah, for sure. But I know Nevada specifically said, no, we're not, we're not sanctioning that. So yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. So what do you, what do you think about that matchup? Do you know much about, uh, Gaethje? Uh, I watched his last couple fights. Yeah. Um, remember, I think, do you remember his last one? What it was, who it was? I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to, who was it? Just tell me I'm trying to put it together in my head cowboy baby oh that's right that's right that's right so Easy. obviously that was that was a one that wasn't even a full round that was round one 418 uh you know that was a knockout tko uh Easy. you know with justin that was just that was that was kind of like the maybe the second or yeah probably the second second or third fight that we we say oh man cowboy maybe we need to give it a rest cowboy maybe <laughs> let's chill a little bit i think that's was that was kind of that second instance where I was like, oh, Cowboy, come on, man. Give it a rest for a little bit. But, you know, his fight before that was uh, Edson Barboza. Uh, that, was, that was obviously a uh, KO, TKO in round one as well, two minutes, 30 seconds. And then before that, uh, James Vick, and that was a round one TKO as well. So Justin Gaethje is coming off uh, a great history. I think he's looking really, really good. And I think this actually might be a cooler fight to watch for the public just because we know how good Khabib is. And when he gets people on the ground, like 
it's overtime. You know what I mean? Khabib's fights are some of the best, but some of the worst to watch. Yo, Jalal, you know mute I mean? your Jalal, mute your mic or something. I don't even know what that is. That's there we go. It was all like, yeah. Were you hearing that too? <laughs> yeah, you think he's pinching one off? That'd be weird. Maybe, yeah, maybe he's doing like that one lady she took the phone into the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. But, uh, you know, I, like I was saying, I think this will be a, kind of a more entertaining, more fun fight to watch. You never know. Somebody can catch you right off guard, catch you with the right hook, and you're over. But Khabib's fights are great. But like I said, they're some of the worst to watch. They're just not fun. They're just not entertaining. There's so much just on the ground. The George St. Pierre aspect. Yeah. And, and wearing people out. It it works. He wins. He's dominant in, in what he does in his division, but I'm kind of pumped, actually. I think <laughs> this could be a pretty damn entertaining, striking match that, that is just that could be off the chain. It plays really well. So I find this to be pretty uh, interesting. I will tell you this. Uh, Dustin Poirier is a little hurt because of this. Um, Dustin Poirier basically wanted you know his go at this. He's coming off of... Uh, off of a crazy last fight, but what the rumors I'm hearing is this kind of sets up a great matchup between Poirier and Conor McGregor, possibly, you know, that's going to really put asses in the seats. That's, I mean, we look at, we look at Gaethje and uh, Poirier. That was one of the most intense fights that we had ever seen. That went Back in all four rounds. Yeah, dude, that went yeah, yeah, all yeah. four rounds. That was April 14th. That went all four rounds. Now Poirier ended up ended up getting the win on that. But that was one of the one of the best fights I have ever seen. And again, I'm kind of new into the UFC, but uh this sets up a possibility of Poirier and McGregor. And I think that would be a great card. Great, great move for the UFC. We'll see if it happens. Why why are you saying uh and then the winner of Poirier McGregor fights Gaethje or what? Or fights the winner of this fight? Is or, that what you're saying? Or Khabib or you comes saying? back. Khabib comes back into the discussion. I know you have to. You he have has to be back. Champ. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I was going to say. You look, it just depends on how this fight rolls. We'll, we'll see what happens. But we have to deal with that interim belt versus the real belt. And, um, you know, I say whoever wins between Poirier and uh, McGregor takes on Khabib. That's what this, I think. That's happens. what I'm saying. That's why they need to postpone. Why are they trying to force this down everyone's throat, dude? This thing is such a mess right now. It's not that Khabib medically can't per- perform. Like, why are we messing with this? Why right. are we? I get it's been canceled a ton of times. I get all this stuff, but it just doesn't feel. I don't know. It feels yeah. weird. It feels extremely weird, dude. It, it, a weird forced. You know, again, there's going to be nobody in attendance. Um, I don't know. We might only see like between i don't know probably what eight and 12 people in the entire in the entire venue it says it's going to be pretty cleaned out it's going to be really weird um i don't know it just feels really forced if you ask me you know especially when khabib's not hurt that's the fight that we all want to see not that this one's you know going to be bad by any means but that's the fight that we all deserve that's the fight that we want to see why can't we just postpone it why can't we just try to postpone it a couple months now on the other side i can see where dane is coming in and God, dude, there is going to be absolutely nothing else on that Saturday night, April 18th. I mean, the amount of... Oh, I'm not saying I'm not watching. Obviously, I watched watched the shitty product WWE put out there. I mean, granted, it was a lot of fast-forwarding, but still. I mean, I I can't blame the UFC. Like, if they can get sanctioned and they can make it happen, I I guess, why not? This isn't the fight that we want to see. We need that Khabib and Tony Ferguson. I mean, this is the fifth time now that we're not allowed to see this, but... uh, you know, postponing that a couple months versus getting money right now in your pocket, ready to rock. Um, I don't know. I just think I, this, this one's probably going to happen, and then you're not going to see a, another fight for a little while just because I think they're going to get a lot of bad press. And, and we'll see. We'll see. But I don't know, man. It, it just doesn't feel right. This is interesting perspective too. Just incredible. Saw a Twitter post talking about why Dana would put the fighters at risk. Unless the fight is in buttfuck Egypt, what happens when these fighters have to go to the hospital to heal? Or I think he means less, unless the fight isn't. So I think, cause that's where, I mean, it's going to be somewhere remote or outside the U S or. So like he said, yeah. What, yeah. What if somebody does get fucked up to the fact they can't fly home or can't fly anywhere to heal up? 
Right. Yeah, that's crazy. And then they're they're put at hospitals where floors above them or floors below them, they have the corona patients. And I know right. the hospitals are doing as best they can. Bless their hearts. Bless all the hospital workers, nurses, RNs, doctors. Um, but it just seems like there's ex- just so much extra risk that is just being taken for a little bit of entertainment. And I can appreciate it because we don't have shit going on. But damn, man, I think at this point in time, we just need to think about people's health. But WWE certainly didn't. The UFC is following suit. Um, I don't know, man. And that's what, I, and I would love to see what the, uh, how many employees had to work for WWE. I would love to see how what the what the production team and staff that took on hand, how what it took to run that thing. Yeah, over the weekend, I'm curious. I really am. But yeah, I don't. I don't like the the show must go on mentality. I don't think mm-hmm. that is best for anyone. Yeah, true that. So what do you um while we're on sports real quick, hit me up on the uh the PG tour changes. Yeah, man. This was just announced today. Um, as we as we pretty much are canceling all of 2020 aside from WWE and a little bit of UFC action, uh, from anything from uh, NBA to MLB. Um, I think today is when stances with Corona. I think today was the first day they all kind of can kind of go to the facilities and kind of hang out. I don't know what type of workouts, but I was hearing something on ESPN that today would normally be the day that they would start uh, mm. getting together. But that being said, almost all of 2020 should be canceled. It is canceled. I don't even think we're going to have an NBA championship, unfortunately, but that's just me being a realist here. But the PGA came out today and uh, discussed three, ma- uh, three golf majors announce new dates. Uh, and then while one is canceled completely until next year, uh, because of COVID-19. So start off, uh, first PGA championship that is going on and they have announced new dates for that. Uh, from August 6th through the 9th on that. The Ryder Cup is there soon to follow, and that is happening and still keeping its original date of September 25th through the 27th. Uh, The U.S. Open has now changed uh, to September 17th through the 20th, and the Masters, the greatest tournament of all tournaments, in my opinion, the most history, the most tradition, the most beauty, those azaleas are just so great. The grass is so green. There's nothing better than spring golf at the Masters has been pushed back to November now, 12th through the 15th. And with that being said, the major tournament that was obviously uh, canceled is the British Open or the Open Championship, as they call it. So that has postponed, and they're going to do that at the Royal St. George next year, 2021. So it's not even happening this year. So Wow. Based off of that, I know, you're gambling. I know you're a gambling man, so I pulled a little odds for you here. So uh, with the – let's go with the Masters because that's my favorite tournament, right? The other ones, they don't mean shit. Favorites to win 2020 Masters Tournament in November. You want the odds? Do you want to throw me some odds? What do you think? Do you want to no, you give them to me? No. All right. So number one, uh, with the best odds, uh, according to uh, Caesars Sportsbook, Rory McIlroy coming in seven to one odds to win the Masters Tournament. Now, in November? Yeah. And if he does this, remember that completes the, the, the big grand slam for him. So he's won all the, all the majors if he was to win that. So he completes that slam, which is totally cool. John Rahm coming in second at 14 to one. You've got Brooks Kepka, who's coming off that serious injury with, I think it was the knee um, on that. He's coming in at 16 to one. Uh, your boy, Justin Thomas at 16 to one tiger woods defending champion of the master's tournament coming at 16 to one as well. And, uh, another one, I think where I put my money on this one, I'm really liking Tommy Fleetwood. He's the long haired guy. Um, you know, just, I can't remember where he's from. I think he's from the UK. I think he's from, uh, like London and he's coming in at 30 to one. That's where I'm putting my money this year. Yeah. Tommy well, Fleetwood. What it, geez, we're so far out from November. You're, yeah. I don't know if I'm putting monies on a money on a masters in November, not to mention you're doing Tommy fleet when he's 30 to one, he might gain 30 pounds by the time, you know, <laughs> who knows? He might be out money. Like he's just sitting inside. I mean, what, the guy's yeah. swinging at a golf simulator. 
with with all the snacks in quarantine and the Cheetos, that guy, yeah, he could, he could be fat bastard by November. <laughs> who knows? Right, who knows? <laughs> that's I don't know, guy. That's a lot. That's a lot, man. Yeah, well, lot. we'll see. But I, I like. I, oh my gosh, Jalal! What's Jalal doing? Over here? That sounds like he's uh, he's doing a dab. That sounds like a butane torch. <laughs> it did Taking sound dabs. like he was lighting it up. Yeah. That or uh, he just hopped off the Death Star to do the show. Ah, yes, good one. Star, I don't even know Star Wars, so that might be not not a good one. I don't know either. Uh, well, oh, that's what I was gonna say. Everyone's rat, uh, ripping him in the in the chat for using the 500 hour AOL disc and letting the tri- free trial. <laughs> is it still fire. fuck? Is, does it sound any better now? Oh, it sounds better now. It didn't before. Okay. It sounded like yeah. crap. But- I'm just. Yeah, sounds- I, I can get audio, but if I try to turn the video on, it just it just takes a dump. Okay, oh. I don't. We, I don't need the video. We don't need the video. But I did want yeah. to. I'm, I'm glad your mic is working, because I wanted to talk to you guys about the, um, the IG beat battles over the weekend. Mm. Mm. Did you guys see them? I yeah, did. I, I did. Seen I t- most of them. Yeah, I tuned. I tuned in a couple as well, for sure. What were all the ones that went down? I saw Lil John and uh, T Pain. T Pain. What else is <laughs> yeah. there? I saw that one. I saw um, the Ryan Tedder versus. Uh, oh, that's Benny right. Blanco. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I saw that one too. The Teddy Riley one got pushed. I saw. Yeah, it got postponed. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I, I personally think they're taking it off of Instagram after the, the Lil John T Pain one. And I think they got some business in the works to get it on a better quality platform. Oh, really? That'd be cool. Well, yeah. yeah why? Because I mean, they hit they hit two hundred and fifty four k. But how many of those IG people left. can you just can you move over to another thing and right. have them sign up and sign it? How many people can you right. do that to? If they put if they put too much red tape on there, and if they start having commercials and just stupid stuff like that, it's gonna really take a hit as far as the numbers go. Yeah, yeah. It's just too. Uh, that's what's great about it right now is it's organic and it's mm-hmm. on your phone already and it's something you're already on already and you get the little notification that pops up it says they're live and you can just click in you know if i get that the sound quality balance, is the greatest but right i was just gonna say if they can just have something where it's a direct input and get the sound going direct and have cleaner microphones and stuff that would be cool um but i think they could achieve that on like youtube or something you know same way that you know we were we used to do it but if they could do that and not have it be on like you know Swiss beats keep saying like versus TV or whatever. I think that's like the brand that they're trying to build for it. If they had like a separate app where you had to log in and all that stuff, I think that that would be really crappy. Yeah, they should do it. With, they should just do it with someone that's got like I, I, Vice just popping into my head. Just someone like that that's got an app already ready to go for TV or Apple TV or something that you could just watch mm-hmm. it on your TV. They were in the comments actually like. Swiss hit us up like let's let's figure this out because people kept you know talking about the quality and how you had to uh had to i think you have to cut it after like an hour yeah an hour it it cuts you off instagram closes you yeah you gotta start over yeah ryan that's that's what happened to ryan tedder and uh benny blanco and and he was like yeah make sure to get back on get back on like yeah there's got to be a better way to do that for sure and who Dude, I knew I knew nothing about Benny Blanco before before this whole thing. Holy shit. That guy has got some of the most influential, like most dominant airplay that guy's a monster. dance songs in the collection. I was I was blown away. And he had a lot out. more to go too. They did like 20 songs, but he had way more in the tuck. Huh. Oh yeah. Dude, and it's his catalog is just crazy. And Ryan Tedder, Tedder has a great catalog too. I said that on IG. I said he that does. his catalog is good. He has he's worked with huge artists, everyone from Rihanna to Adele to Beyonce. But Ed Sheeran, I feel like Ed Sheeran. Most of his songs are ballads, man. They're they're mm-hmm. mostly really powerful ballad type radio hits. And I don't know how well that translates in a battle setting. Benny, right. with all the dance records. It was nonstop dance records. Oh, and then it's Katy Perry's first single. Oh, then it's Katy Perry's second single. And I'm not talking about off her last album. I'm talking about her, the first shit she ever did, like yeah. way back, like her very first shit that brought her in the game. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I didn't know he produced that. I'm just like, God, yeah. That's what I loved about it is just being like, oh, damn, he did that one. Oh, damn, he did that one. Oh, he did that one. 
crazy. I was just I up here getting hyped. It's been the best part of all of these battles is like we didn't know that they did half of these records. Like even the T Pain one, he dropped a couple songs. Where I was like, oh dang, he wrote that or yeah, 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 um, for sure, for sure. Or different beats that people you know worked on. It's like I think that's been one of the most enjoyable parts about it for me is just learning. And a lot of people that didn't previously get the shine are, are now getting some more shine. So it's cool. Right. Yeah. I, yeah, I think no this doubt. has been one of my favorite things of the quarantine so far has been the Instagram beat battles and song battles. Uh, what did T-Pain, who do you think won that T-Pain little jet? So I think Benny Blanco smashed Tedder. He just did. That was my yeah. opinion. I think we're all kind of in agreement there. Yeah. Uh, Lil John. Tedder held his weight a little bit, but yeah, he, he definitely lost. Here's it. what I would say about Tedder. Tedder was getting annihilated by about 10 songs in 10 to 10 to 17. And then he really came back hard, maybe 10 to 16. Then he came back hard at the end with like three, four really heavy shots. And I thought he brought it closer, but Benny, Benny still. Just, he was just uh, so far ahead. Yeah. yeah dude. I mean, and, and Ryan had to be Ryan Tedder had to be kind of his, his own best, like, advocate he was like and this one and this was like uh interscope records like biggest fucking single that was the weirdest part about it 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 was really weird how he had to kind of set himself up you know i was like he had to be his own greatest hype man benny blanco just hit play you know what i mean that guy was just down to party people in the comments kept saying like dude just play the record dang even timbo got in there and was like no talking just hit play oh wow (laughs) who was talking too much both right, of them Tedder. they were just kind of like talking to each other oh yeah yeah like, yeah. dude little john and t-pain were talking forever too yeah yeah that was a little bit more entertaining though but yeah it, Tedder, it Tedder and blanco was. just had a weird dynamic they were like being nice at first like dude just like bigging each other up mm-hmm, and yeah. They, yeah they just were having like a weird a weird dynamic back and forth yeah i thought oh dude i went back and watched the scott storch mini fresh after our last episode i went back and watched the entire thing on youtube and uh, yeah, dude, Storch was just slaying him. That was another guy that was like, holy, what a catalog of hits. What Man. a catalog, dude. Just yeah. huge records with, I mean, everything, every style of record too, like slow R&B, Beyonce, melodic records. Then you go to huge club records like Make It Rain with Lil Wayne and Fat Joe. And then you go to uh, the legendary records like the Dr. Dre with the Still DRE, just yeah, all over the map. Scott Storch. Yeah, 50, huge monster 50 records. Candy yeah. Shop, uh, Disco Inferno. What's the other one he did on that album? Uh, his second album. Jeez, he did so many records, dude. Uh, so much stuff. I don't remember. But yeah, so that, one was, that one was crazy. And a lot of people were saying like, oh, you guys are you know, disrespecting Manny Fresh. And it's like nobody, I don't think anybody was trying to discredit Manny Fresh. Like, that dude's a legend. Even with a bias of, you know, people that were from the South and have that south bias we're saying like this was just disappointing like i don't i personally just didn't think it was the right matchup and it kind of portrayed manny in a in a in a bad light but that dude's a legend still a legend who do you think won the little john t pain battle little john dude little john was crazy wasn't he Mm -hmm. looking at it from the beginning i was like Oh, dude, I I think I'm gonna give this shit to T Pain because I thought same thing. T Pain just yeah. has club yeah. club records, radio club records. Then I was like, Lil John, obviously club records as well. But I thought it would be a lot closer, and I was surprised that Lil John was not necessarily handling T Pain, but dude, he was giving him monster shot after monster shot in response to T Pain's big records. His were bigger, and uh t-pain started the battle with crazy fire right out the gate he started oh, he opened up with good life and i was like whoa right welcome to that good life i was like oh i shit, thought this t-pain is crazy. was winning all day i even told misha he was like who you got i was like oh you know t-pain i think me too I think has bro. Enough. but and I, I really liked how he did like the performance tracks like he turned the r&b songs into kind of like a live t-pain yeah he did the shit that he did like at the grammys his performance yeah. tracks he used the performance track, so I think that gave him a little bit of, a, of an edge, but you know, Little John just had so much. What about Little John debuting the song with uh, Usher and Ludacris that oh, nobody's oh, ever yeah. heard before? How about that? You know, yeah, whether it was, it was like, great or not, like debuting new music, like that's how do you not win? Yeah, and T, well, they were both that was the agreement, like they were going to both play 20 songs each, and then they were going to each play a new record. 
right at the end, you know, or whatever. Well, once Lil John announced that it was this record featuring all these celebs, T Pain was like, "Oh, hold up, we ain't, no, we ain't doing that shit." You know, he's got that <laughs> happy boy already, yeah. country boy, Tallahassee type that's, voice. That's you know, actually what pretty good. Thank yeah, you, man. That is Thank pretty you. good. Thank you, man. I was watching that thing two and a half hours. Big ass chain. Thank you. you know, Dude, yeah, I was that big ass chain is still. It's so so funny, bro. Oh I, I, I told my girl five that. times during that. I was like, I love T-Pain so much. I just love <laughs> this guy's personality. He would be a guy I would just be excited to chop it up with and kick it with. But I would be so ecstatic to sit down and try to make music with that man, whether I'm producing a beat with him, whether we're coming up with a concept. Like He would just be so fun to mm -hmm. do something creative like that. And I would love to see him in that element and how his process he is just funny, bro. Hey, he, he's fun. Is that T Pain or Jazzy Faye? John King, you're <laughs> killing me, bro. Ah! <laughs> Jazzy Fizzle, Product Shizzle, my nizzle. Dude, check this out. So let me put ah! you on. Let me put you on a little game here. So. What these beat battles have done for me is like, what else can I learn? Right. Cause like Jalal says, I'm learning stuff. I'm like, Holy shit. How did, I didn't know he wrote that. I didn't know he produced that. I didn't know he was behind that. Um, it's so crazy. So what I've done then with some of these guys is what else have they done? What else can I find out? And what I found with uh, T pain was he did a tiny desk concert with NPR, which is some of the best like edited fucking concerts i've ever seen like mac miller with the tiny desk uh was mm -hmm. great uh t-pain did one. Oh my god man it shows t-pain in a whole new light it shows obviously the mass singer you know i think he actually won the mass singer uh, a year or two ago um he was the champion and obviously that showed off a lot of his r&b kind of type singing without having the auto tune and all that stuff one he's a phenomenal singer uh two man, I was, I was just inspired after I watched that tiny desk concert. I'm just like the styles that this guy can play with and, and be great at. And he can also produce and he can sing and he has his auto tune. And I mean, if you haven't watched the tiny desk concert with, with T-Pain, you're missing out. Go watch that. It's, it's like 13, 15 minutes, something like that. Great watch after that, because it just knocks the point home, the talent of that individual. So I've, I've been turned on to new other platforms that i can learn more about them uh through these beat battles as well which has been which has been really cool it's, little john it, is just actually, doing it oops sorry go ahead uh i was just gonna say that was that was the thing that was the um first time i actually knew or learned that t-pain could sing without autotune and that that performance just blew me away he actually even debuted a new song after the battle was over i'm not sure if he did it like while little john was still on but he played a song where uh it was like an r&b record where he had no autotune so I wonder if we'll get that, but it sounded sounded great. Yeah, he was playing. Uh, I I forgot which song it was. Little John threw on, and T Pain was doing the singing in the background. He was singing like some mm -hmm. vocals over it, uh, singing along with it, and it was really really dope. Like of mm -hmm. on some shit, Little John was was playing. So I thought that was dope. But Little John, the simple fact that Little John's just been doing it for so long, and he reminded <laughs> you that throughout the battle. Like, yo, I did this in '94, '94. <laughs> I did this record. Just to let you guys know, like, holy shit, dude, uh, needed That's that in 94? Like, like, what was T-Pain doing in 94? You know, like, so that's that's something that uh, you have to remember, too, when it comes to the, the battle between those guys. I'm looking forward to the next, you know, the next step or the next level, I guess. If it stays cool and the platform is cool and it's easy, I'm really looking forward to it. Did you guys see 2 chains? I'll just wrap this up with 2 chains. He came out and said that... Uh, He's trying to trying to uh, get a battle going. I saw this article on Hot New Hip Hop. Did you guys see that? Huh? He's trying to get a battle going with what? He's just trying to get a battle going with anyone. And the article says that uh, it says it's a new week and the competitive spirit is yet to die down. In fact, it seems more alive than ever. And Two Chains is actively seeking a foe with in with whom to, he can engage a hit for hit battle. Unfortunately, the task is proving to be easier said than done. So he's having some issues finding an opponent, I guess. Uh, oh, sorry, your mic's cutting out a little bit, Jalal, or it's like fizzing out a little. All right. He says, so I put a post up saying that Atlanta has run the game for the past couple decades, begins Titty Boy, and me wanting to participate in this thing that Swizz and Timberland have going on. 
So we were thinking of doing some people outside the city to compete with. Some people saying Drake, but Drake got more hits than the Beatles. Like literally, we know this. Somebody said <laughs> Wayne, but he's been rapping before all of us. And we all came up on tune. Mm -hmm. Then Snoop chimed in, but he got a couple projects produced by Dr. Dre. Chain, two Chains continues. But when he drops his stuff, it's going to stick. We know what Snoop has in his bag. I'm trying to see who I can go against. I saw French say Fab. Fab got some dope ass girl records, but I got that trap. Somebody said Meek, and I thought that would be dope. So let's do it, Meek. Let's do it. With the challenge officially issued, it didn't take long for Meek and Will caught wind of Titty Boy's offer and quote, I just watch, LOL, wrote Meek, sliding in the comments, respectfully bowing out to my brother. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear that the battle will transpire, though two chains will likely remain on the hunt for a worthy opponent. There you go, fellas. Who do you guys <laughs> think would be good to battle two chains? I don't know. What's he got like what's he got? Like four four hits total? No. <laughs> I think, and, and then are you like nuts? Uh, and then three of them are features. <laughs> I'm just saying. Are you I don't know. Chains. Chains has records, but it's different than a producer battle. Rappers shit is different. Like, yeah, right. then you're using shit you were featured on. You're using it's like a highlight reel. Uh, you don't have to have produced the record. You can kind of just, which I mean, if you're talking, if we're talking in that from that aspect, two chains ain't really even up there. Anyone he yeah. battles, uh, two chains. I mean, yeah. he's got stuff, but I don't, I don't want to see him bat T Pain battle any rappers. I just think that's. Weird, it's got to be a singer, mm -hmm. but I don't know who's like in that same. I thought the little the, the little John matchup was was about as close as you can get. I mean, I don't know who else Payne could battle. No, two chains. Who would he? Two could chains. He battle? Oh, two chains. I'm sorry. Yeah, two chains. Did two you hear chains. the story? Oh. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I just heard. Okay. I thought you were saying T Pain versus two chains. No, no, two chains. I I don't know. I think two chains versus uh. I think I thought. Yeah. I think he probably would have handled Meek. Um, I think Fab would have. I don't know. He said Fab got some good girl records. Fab's got a lot of fucking hard shit. Fab's got a I lot. Like, I, like, got, I like Fab. I like Fab. I think that would be actually be a pretty good battle, and I think he might get handled. What does he need? Well, I guess Fab Fab doesn't have trap shit, but I mean, there wasn't any trap going on at that time. I feel like this this these battles are best. Um, they're they're best made for like kind of the legends, you know, people that have classics. I don't I don't want to see any of the newer artists. And and Chains has been around for a while, but I mean I don't know if he's got like Ooh. a lot of hit records. Some good stuff in the comments. Before I read those, did anyone say Chains versus Rick Ross? I don't see it. That would be mine. Two Chains hmm. versus Rick Ross. I think that would be a hard ass. <laughs> Ross is Ross would oh my god, that would not even be close. You don't think so? Ross would destroy two chains. Destroy worse, so worse than some of the other people we're talking about. Uh, I don't know, but he's definitely destroying two chains. I see. I like. I like fifty in there. Let's see. John King said Fab versus fifty. Meek versus Jada. Clips versus the Locks. Mm. <laughs> he's lining them up. Two chains versus Tip. Oh, uh, Ti. To do yeah. maybe Ti yeah. versus Rick Ross. What do you think about that? You don't think Ti? I still, has gotten... I still think Ross is Ti's got. He's got a lot, but I still you don't think, think Ross, Ross and Ti would be good. I, that, that would be, that would be, be pretty good. That would be better than Two Chains for sure. Better than Two Chains, Rick Ross. Rick Ross would embarrass yes. him. You're saying yes, yeah. yes. I want to see right. Fifty, man. I think Fifty would be entertaining, but he'd probably have to do it on like Stars or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he. uh yeah, that would be that would be very good. I really want to see somebody wake up Kanye from his Wyoming uh, slumber. You think anybody will? You think Ye will ever pop out of this? You think he's just he would never do an IG battle, but mm -mm. I don't know. I would I would love to see him battle somebody. See, Ooh, whether maybe, whether maybe. it's songs he is rapping on or songs he produced, either way. Neighborhood says Ti versus Luda. Now, I could get into that one. I can get into that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that'd, there, be, that'd be pretty even. Is there anybody uh, producer rapper wise that, or I, I actually, 
Yeah. You could say for another is like producer the rapper that's the closest to Kanye, right? There's nobody, there's no other producer rapper that's even. Mm-hmm. You didn't, so with Kanye, if Kanye battles someone, would he have to be on there as a producer or on there as a rapper? I think if it's him and Pharrell, you could you could almost do both because they both have that. That's ability. the only guy you could do both. Other right. than that, you got to make him pick one. Mm-hmm. Only one that's coming to mind. Right. Who Same. said Nav? Get you're about to get blocked. <laughs> <laughs> goat J. Goat James to get blocked. Oh, fuck. I gotta put you on timeout, goat. Go yeah, James, my twenty first next. I'm going. Uh, I'm not going to be out and celebrate. That sucks. That sucks, Go James. Oh, damn. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see Nas and uh, Kanye battle rapping, not production, just rapping. I'd like to see that battle. No, Kanye mm-hmm. bury him. What do you? What do you I, mean? I know, but I'd still like to see it. I think it'd be great. Nah, nah. I think just because Kanye has had bigger records, but yeah. Nas would need somebody. Yeah, he would need a different opponent. People keep saying That's- Dr. Dre. I don't know who's getting Dr. Dre to do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be somebody. I don't know who's getting- big. Right. But, dude, how crazy would that be? A 40 song battle? Shit you've produced and rapped on? Dre versus Ye? Oof. Go a 40. For the stars. Go, one, that, go a 40. One for the stars, for sure. That'd be the ultimate, right? That'd be the top of the fucking list, epicenter. The thing about these battles is it's not like you can do a bracket style tournament or anything easy or anything either, because I don't know, like we just saw, okay, let's, for example, we just saw Manny Fresh battle Scott Storch. You want to see Manny Fresh now go battle someone else or Lil John, or once you're kind of done doing it. Nah, nah. Once it, one, one and done, one and done. Right. I mean, you, it's not like, they're coming up with new material. Maybe you play right. a few records you didn't play before, but you're still going to play those records or you're going to want to play those huge hits. John King's going off. I never, I didn't say that Kanye would destroy Nas. I said he needs a different opponent because Kanye this is not the same. had bigger records and it would just, people would just say, oh, that's a smash and decide that Kanye won. Isn't that what it is? Isn't that the battle? Isn't that the point of the yeah, battle? But the, you want to have an a, a even matchup, though. Like, that's exactly what as... I'm saying. Kanye, that's why I, I think I said Kanye would smash Nas. I'm not disrespecting Nas. I'm saying Kanye would smash him due to the magnitude of his records versus what Nas' records did. Not even close. Not even close. Yeah, because Something nobody's nobody's with. scoring like rapping ability. Like that. Right, exactly. It's that's just... not the point of these battles. One scoring yeah. rapping ability. It's, it's about the songs, allure overall of songs. What did record. that song do? The record, right? What's the difference, by the way, when they do a record of the year and song of the year on the Grammys, Joel? No difference. I don't know. Do they have <laughs> separate ones? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they have they song do. of the year and record of the year. I always ask every year. We, we talked like, about it doing? on the last on the last couple of Grammy talks. Like we're we're always wondering, like why? I don't understand. I thought record was just like the industry way of saying song. Even Robin, who doesn't know much about music at all, she's like, I don't understand. Can you explain to me? I said, No, I can't. I I really can't. It probably it probably has to do with genre. I don't know. No one is saying he's better at rapping. Oh, did he say that already? I'm sorry. Ether, that <laughs> shit to make your soul burn slow. Yeah, no one's talking about them versus rapping. So <laughs> the distinction is record of the year, first and foremost, is I um, said rapper. Well, I meant for- battle. We're talking about battles. The topic's battles, John King. Sorry, I said rapper. He would fucking annihilate Nas in a battle. Does that make sense to you? Does that make more sense to you? If we're breaking it down, we're talking about battles. I'm talking about rapper versus rapper, a better rapper. That's like so a rap record, battle. Record of the <laughs> like year. rap battle, like they're face to face, John. Is that what you're talking about? How did you get on that? <laughs> M versus Cannabitch. That's funny. <laughs> he says, "Okay, my bad," no, no. but he's still all in caps lock. So you got to watch out for John. <laughs> 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 but just to break this up, check this out. I like this one, man. Uh, let's see who said it. Daniel Belton says, <laughs> "Florida Georgia Line versus Kid Rock." <laughs> oh, yeah, Southern hits. I'm here for that. <laughs> I'm here for that. That's I'm here funny. for that. Who said that? Uh, da- Danny B. Nice job, Danny B. I like that a lot. That's funny. Danny That's B, funny. my guy. 
it's a good hangout session with you guys today, man. A lot of activity in the chat, and we're just kind of riffing off bullshit. Uh, I like it. Hey, fun. so the so the answer for the record of the year is uh, record of the year is for the performing artist, and song of the year honors the songwriter. Mm. Ah, so the performer versus the writer. Yeah, so record of the year covers performing artists, producers, engineers, all that, and okay. uh, song of the year is the, the songwriter. Huh. Gotcha. There you gotcha. go. But but uh Lady Gaga or whoever still goes up to collect both Grammys. Yeah, Lady Gaga's written a, she's written a lot of stuff that she writes all her own shit. Them. I, Does the I'd artist like still go her. up there if they don't write it? If they don't write it, is it just the songwriting crew where the artist still goes and Ariana Grande still goes up there and stands by him? Even though she didn't write it, she still go up there for song the songwriter. Year? I think just oh, really? the songwriter. Interesting. I guess I never yeah. paid enough attention. Joe mm -hmm. Dirt versus Joe Exotic. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. That's Funny. good bears. That's good. That's good bears. Ghost faced action Bronson. Wow. Mm. That would. Uh, I was just. Just because they sound just, alike. Uh, dude, I was just saying that the other day. How much do they sound alike? My lord. It's a lot. TTF versus Oh It's Teddy in a rollerblade versus skateboard. <laughs> That was funny, huh? Did you guys see that on uh, Twitter? TTF. Uh, you know, I, I went and rollerbladed with TTF about, what, do you, what was that, about four or five years ago? Probably five years uh, ago? Yeah, yeah, probably five, five or so. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. So the footage that I saw of Ted, um, you know, hey, good for Ted. He's a big guy on a skateboard. That's a little scary. He's, he's as old as I am. I think he's 37. <laughs> uh, so franchise has got, uh, you know, got the, <clears throat> got the younger side uh, advantage. But uh, I'll tell you what, five years ago, TTF was slaying the blades. I was there. I can blade okay. Like, I still could. You know, I still could starting, if I needed the to. Stopping all that bullshit, dude. I'm gonna say it right now, and this this is no bias because I I love Ted and I love franchise. Franchise would slay Ted. Like it wouldn't even be funny. This fool would be throwing out some fucking backward Royale. Fucking. They're just totally. Deal. They're two totally different yeah. sports. But here's the Completely fact of the matter. Different. What I would be doing would be insanely more difficult and also something that he being a guy probably couldn't even stand up and jump on a pair of rollerblades. You know what I mean? So no. that's where, that's where it's like, all right, we're, we're talking shit about some stuff we're not going to do. Like, and right. then it's like, well, it's not, not going to, it's not wanting to, or it's not, uh, it's not that I couldn't do it. It's that I, I wouldn't do it. And you know, the, the, the kind of people that say that that's a nice net, that's a nice cushion because you can just <laughs> say, Oh, I could, I don't want to. That's a very right. easy way out. Because you don't ever have to prove anything. <laughs> totally. It's easy. It's the it's the easy way out. So I mean, I mean, if that's how you want to go out, take it. I mean, it is what it is. Or but like, why why would you be talking shit about something that is? There's no culmination ever. You're never gonna do it. You're never gonna prove you can do it. You're never gonna prove that it's gay. So I mean, where are we at? Hey, it ain't gay if it's if it's three way. <laughs> uh. Lonely Island. Thank you. Yeah. It ain't gay <laughs> if it's three way. <laughs> Dude. And that's the thing. Like I was doing, and that's what I just, I just, I don't even know. I don't care. Like what you think of rollerblading or what you think of whatever, what you saw or who, you know, whatever. All I'm saying is like when I'm rollerblading, it's for real. Like it's down fucking huge 20 stair kink fucking rails, like huge drop off ledges off fucking parking garages, big shit huge gaps this isn't fucking roller skating rink rollerblading like i don't know what you think this is but that's that the, that's what i can't flip on flat ground at the studio <laughs> is not matching up to me hitting up a 35 stair kink rail it's not the same thing they're not yeah. on the same level they're just not that's true what's gay <laughs> neighborhood <laughs> fruit booter goat james I, love I don't know, booting. man. I, I'm, I'm going to go back to wrestling. What, I'll take it to the grave. I'm going to, I'm going to go back to what you said. There's one major difference between skateboarding and rollerblading. And I think what makes rollerblading more intense, and this is my opinion. Well, this is your opinion as well. I think you said it best. You cannot fucking bail on rollerblades. It's absolutely impossible to bail. You can't, you can bail on a skateboard at any given time when you're in bike, the air. You can throw your bike away. It, Yep, dude. I, I like I could take anybody. Well, not anybody, but I could maybe, <laughs> maybe in this chat. I think I could take anybody with BMX. 
So I, I would bring that challenge. Maybe when we're successful, the most underrated podcast, maybe in 2021, because 2020 is canceled. Maybe we'll do like <laughs> you, you and somebody else who wants to fruit boot. We'll fly them out here. We'll, we'll do a test and then I'll do the BMX uh, versus whoever. And, but what I will tell you, going back to rollerblading, let's we'll play cannot, a game of skate or a game of bike, whatever you guys play. That'd be sick. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but you can't saying. fucking bail on blades. It's yeah. like a snowboard. You can't, you can't bail your legs, your ankles, everything is going with you. You're, you're going to die. <laughs> you know, that's what, I mean? what makes it so scary. And that's why it's so funny to hear people be like, Oh, it's so gay or it's easy or it's this, that, and the other. Because once you strap those bitches on and you're, even if you're at the skate park and you're approaching a quarter pipe, there's no, there's no getting off that. You're approaching that quarter pipe at whatever speed you're approaching it. You got to figure out what the fuck's going on yeah. and figure out a way not to, to hurt yourself. The other thing is if you're approaching a set of stairs, you're in the street, you're approaching a rail, you're approaching a gap and you jump up on that rail. Or you just jump up on the set of stairs and you decide, ah, I don't really like the way I, I jumped up. There's no just jumping off to the other side, walking away, picking up your skateboard. There's none of that. You have to figure it out. You're now in the air with the shits attached to your feet and you have to figure out if you're going to bust your shin, bust your nuts, break your fucking ankle. Like, what are you going to do here? If you didn't, if you didn't jump right, there's just so much more, there's just so much more to it. That's not, it's just outside the box or outside of certain people's thinking. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thomas G says, sorry to stir up crap or sorry to stir crap up. Rollerblade. <laughs> <laughs> he donated Tommy 10, just decided it. 10 bucks. He said, he just showed up everybody in the chat. Oh, uh, that's funny. I, that's funny. <laughs> Dude, Joey. Perfect. I think skateboarding is more technical, but rollerblading is a lot more physical. Perfect point. Yeah, rollerblading to me is like flipping a baton with your feet. Doing that shit with your hands is fucking hard. So doing it with your feet, obviously a lot harder. That's a very oh, yeah. hard thing to master. It's a hard skill totally understand that i respect what skateboarding does you'll never hear me call skateboarding gay you never, never. hear me tell you those guys aren't talented you never he tell me you don't ever hear me put that shit down because i love watching it i enjoy it mm -hmm. i have i grew up with friends that skateboard and that's why my neighborhood was a little different we grew up with we had people on bikes we had people on rollerblades we had people on skateboards and we would all just bob out together as a crew and it was dope mm -hmm. it was fun there wasn't really that divide once we showed up at the park there was the divide between other people but that was them being gay that was their problem oh you are too cool to like be over here, then that's your problem. Like, be over there. No, then, you know? that was that was just the Razor Scooter kids. Don't even worry about those. <laughs> that came out. That came out after I was I was out oh, there. Gotcha. You were. You I had a Razor Scooter bunny just like messing Razor around. Scooter? I was messing around a little bit, like at my, you know, just in the, you know, but not. I wasn't going to the skate park. Like, come on, no way, no way, <laughs> yeah, was, dude. Those kids are worst. nuts. Dude, that is something else I respect though too. Those backflips and tail whips and shit. Those kids are doing on those things. Yeah, that shit is nuts, man. But again, same sure. premise as a bike. You can still push it away. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. I'm saying on rollerblades, there's no pushing it away. Yeah, that's uh, the bikes are a lot heavier than rollerblades or a or a, <laughs> or a deck for sure. Yo, <laughs> neighborhood says flipping a flipping a baton with your feet ain't gay. <laughs> I take it back, neighborhood. <laughs> gay is AIDS. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just. <laughs> Uh, Philly, oh, May man. Philly mayor says Dow flying people out with his retirement savings now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, I like it. Hey, I like man, it. If we don't if we don't stop doing the cast, we're we're getting canceled either way. So going out right. with a bang. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Right. So yeah, what are we doing? Are we still doing? We're still doing some shows, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think. I mean, still until until shows. the job or whatever, until the you know all this stuff. Have you applied for any jobs or? Uh, yeah, just I just started kinda... getting on. I just started getting on uh, this week. Okay. The week over the weekend, and so now today's Monday. So yeah, I'm just barely getting on it. Oh. Yeah, so I, think gonna, things out. Goes. I think I'm going to get on with Pepsi. Pepsi Cola is hiring. I think. Oh, I'm are they? Me. Oh yeah. Doing what, hmm. dude? There's also uh, some NFL stuff in Parker, where I live, and I don't know what that is, but that came across my. Uh, so I don't know. I signed up for these the jobs, whatever this job search company, and they just they just blast your emails with fucking spam all day, saying, "Oh, this this company likes you. This company wants you. Go ahead and apply now." And NFL came across my computer, so I was gonna look into that. Maybe I'll send it your way. Dang. See what's up with that. Uh, let's up just up close this valley. out. Yeah, dude. Yeah, send it send it my way, Dal. Um, yeah, sure. Let's finish this up with sneakers. I'm sorry. We burned so much time on uh, just bullshitting and talking, but there's not really a ton of sneaker stuff anyway. So, right. 
Yep. Yeah, let's just finish that up there then. Cool. You want to see? Uh, you want to see what I got? Oh, you got some shoes in the flesh. Yeah, man. Everybody's uh, been getting them in, so it's kind of no surprise. But Nike had uh, quite a delay. I think this was one of the first shoes that they kind of ha- started having the delay. I don't know if you saw my story. Did you see my story? How they actually closed the Memphis, the main warehouse facility they closed it down because somebody tested positive for COVID. no i did not see that wow Dude, they closed it still uh so as of yesterday it was supposed to reopen but i haven't seen if it did or didn't but they closed that thing in, uh, down until yesterday supposedly so uh i guess they're open back again because i didn't see anything that stated otherwise in social media but they closed it down until yesterday started business uh, they were going to open that back up and they were just plan on doing a massive disinf- uh, disinfecting of the warehouse um, to try to get as many, you know, as, as much of the virus out of there and whatnot. But it's interesting because they not only have people that, uh, from Nike working for them, obviously, but they've actually hired people that have nothing to do with Nike that are just basically, um, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for here? Uh, they're basically just, you know, work for hire so they're by the agencies by the like i work agencies and whatever that you go to in the morning you wait in line and then they have a job for you to do or whatever so these these hiring agencies are actually responsible for like i think 20 percent of that warehouse's uh stock of people so that's pretty crazy as well i didn't know that very interesting so getting back to it though here is the shoe that was mildly delayed it's an uh, obviously orange label, the Nike Air Max 90. And this does happen to be the you infamous. You got the cooking joints, the chef joints? I ain't got no chef joints. <laughs> <laughs> these ain't no shit. These ain't no chef oh, joints. Yeah. These, these are, these are, I'm going to go, I'm going to go shoot some duck, some duck camera. <laughs> what these things are. Wow. Um, here, here's what I would say about these, man. I think the white laces are the play they do come with black and they also do come with the solar um i think the solar is a little obnoxious i usually like laces that is obnoxious because i usually go for a more neutral shoe but i think the white is really the play in these the black looks pretty good um but material wise let's talk about that the material is actually pretty decent it's got some good texture to it um you know it's not like super expensive materials but you've got like the snake skin um like Nike, Nike swooshes, uh, the license plate on the back with the Nike air on that ass. Um, yeah, the materials are pretty good. And what's nice about this air max, like in comparison to the uh, undefeated that I just have, dude, the, these, these are not stiff at all, as you can see, which is really, really nice for the toe and the toe box. You actually have some room in there. Um, I haven't tried these on quite yet cause they've been in quarantine. You know what I mean? I got to let them set because viruses, <laughs> The corona can't last more than three days on shit. So these have been in quarantine, so I haven't tried them on yet. They're still dead You're, stock. Are you out. kidding me about that? I don't know, man. I, I, so what I do is I, I unbox everything outside, and I leave the cardboard box outside that it came in. I bring the Nike box or the Adidas box you know, that the shoes are in, and I disinfect the whole box. And then I let the shoes sit in the box for probably two to three days before I touch them. Sometimes I'll do a little Lysol spray and then I let them sit in the box for, for a day or two. But yeah, man, I'm not, I, I'm not. Really How long taking, have those been there? Uh, they came in Friday morning. This is the first time I've touched them. Wow. Yeah. So, so not I'm even kind putting of, them on, not touching them, not nothing. Wow. No, Dallas. I'm at least letting two days go by before I touch them and then uh, check. The serious. Out. And then I have, see the hand sanitizer <laughs> right next to me. So the moment I put these down, I'm going to sanitize. You know what I mean? Like you can't be too precautious, man. I think with this bullshit that's going on, but uh, yeah, that's 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 crazy. But in hand, these are phenomenal Um, in pictures. They look really good dude in hand, the different textures, the different materials. Again, they're not the super, the most high end materials, Um, the weight of them. I feel like these are lighter weight than any other air max that I have air max 90. That is, Um, but that softness in the toe box, I think helps out a lot when it comes to this construct, uh, constricted shoe, in my opinion. But I think the colors look awesome, man. I think it's a great pair. Uh, they're right at about 2 to 205, 210, 215, depending on the size. Right now on resale, uh, they retailed for, I think, a uh, buck 40. So then you pay 10 bucks worth of you know, taxes and shipping and shit. So 
I'm happy to have him, man. I think it's a cool shoe. I'm happy to celebrate Air Max Day because, in my opinion, this was the only thing that was worth it on Air Max Day. I think it was a really light Air Max Day. I think it was not very fun, um, especially with the corona happening. So, yeah, man, I think this will be a cool shoe to have in the collection, and I'll never forget the coronavirus because of it. Yeah, they look good, man. They look really yeah, good. Uh, I think. Do you? Did you? Uh, were you surprised that the silver? Or that the silver, but all the the whole metal pack sat that day. Did you see that? Uh, no, I'm not surprised. That shoe was awful in all colorways. Yeah, gold, silver, and the the, the rose gold. Yeah, dude, just sat sat right there. Philly Mayor said he sold his right away for three hundred in a size twelve. That's wow, crazy. That's a great Philly, deal. Yeah, dude, great he deal. also just sent twenty five dollars via PayPal. Philly Mayor, twenty five dollars donation to the the PayPal. Thank you, bro. Wow. Thank you, man. Wow. Franchise needs it, man. That fool doesn't have no uh, <laughs> that fool doesn't have no job. He needs it. Holy smokes, dude. Um What else did I? Oh, $10 from Two Fly Daniel. I doubt Dal out here living in a bubble. Yes, Dal. Haha. <laughs> 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 he's excited uh, for you i think that's a little extreme i think you're going a little I think overboard so. with it but i think so man and you know what i'm not seeing any family like again robin and i are definitely staying at the house we're not trying to hurt anybody else or that's why i think you're going overboard because it's not like you even see family your dad lives in montrose your mom lives far away you don't see her either so i mean i know we're it's you're doing all this crazy quarantining to protect yourself which is good but yeah, i'm saying if, for if sure. you got it it's not the end of the world for you yeah but I think maybe you're being- well, hopefully not. Like I do. So they're saying like, I don't have asthma, but you and I, dude, we have, we have some of the worst allergies, allergies known, right. known to man and <sighs> anything. I mean, shit, man, everybody's system's a little different. And if you have anything whatsoever that could compromise your immune system and don't think that sneezing all fucking day and coughing all day because of your allergies and then having the, like, dude, I have had puffy eyes for like, Every other day, you know, I'm itching my eyes. Like, my allergies have been so intense. I don't think that, that doesn't compromise your immune system a little bit. So, like, I'm, I'm definitely afraid of COVID-19. I'm not trying to get that shit. And then all of a sudden, I, I find out that I have colon cancer, and I'm on my deathbed with COVID-19. I just don't trust it. Don't want it. Don't need it out of here. You know, I'm, I'm taking as many precautions as I can. Philly Mayor said in that message, to not kick, kick TTF off the cast fund. <laughs> <laughs> nice. that was the uh the message in the 25 five dollar paypal that's funny i get it Dal. i get it i'm trying you know like like, like neighborhood says dal is worried about all those energy drinks messing up his immune system <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly better safe than sorry yeah anna chop yeah. says asymptomatic dal <laughs> that's better than doghouse dal did you see my name yes doghouse dal. Nice. Doghouse Dow today. I like it. We're ready. Sent PayPal so Google doesn't steal 30%. Yeah, thank you, Philly Mayor. Nice. Yeah, dude, that's that's whack that YouTube takes 30%, but that's how they do it. Put the Kith Aspens on on purpose before you croak. Oh, and propose before you and croak. Propose I'm sorry. before you croak. Wow. Huh. Maybe I propose with the Kith Aspens. The Kith Aspens. <laughs> I don't think she'd want those. I don't think Robin would want me to propose. <laughs> oh, <laughs> true, true. Uh, she was mad at me for ye- yesterday for something. I can't remember what it was now, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, Joey, this is good shit. Uh, to all the sneaker heads, the container store is having a sale. You can get a pack of six for $45 right now. They have mm. the new red and blue cases as well. So he's talking about the sneaker boxes that you see over here next to me if you're trying to cop container store Mm -hmm. has a six pack for 45 bucks and that is on sale because normally these bitches are about i have the big ones and usually uh full retail i think is ten dollars a piece or twelve dollars a piece maybe Hmm. so then this is the size 10 to 12 if you want the smaller size that only that does like eight to eleven or whatever it is uh those are a little bit cheaper but huh well let me let me show you let me show you these fools not to be like me here let me show you the picture here so don't be like me, who has container store boxes, a couple dunks in there, and then all of a sudden he has Ikea over here, which is weird. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he has more Ikea behind the fan there. Sorry, I got I to gotta, I gotta stay cool during the cast. But I just put this Ikea, I think it's the lack 
bookshelf, the one that Ted had. So yeah, I put yeah, that yeah. together because I bought I bought these so long ago. So I put one together and I, I'm doing a test. Black shelves, container, or just IKEA shelves where you really don't have any shoes displayed. You just have your box, which I, I've had it that way for a long time because it, it stores more, right? You can put multiple boxes and then I have boxes on top. I don't know, man. I don't know which one to go with. I'm 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 confused. But don't be like me. If you go container store, go all container store. <laughs> if you go all yeah. lack, go all lack. You're well, you're still here. I guess you just started your sneaker collection um, and you're still deciding. So you just started your collection a couple weeks ago. So you <laughs> yeah. can take some time to you can take some no time shit. to decide what you want to do. Yeah. You haven't had any, you haven't had sneakers for a while. Yeah, I doubt. <laughs> no big deal. I don't know Funny. what I'm doing. Um do you have anything more sneaker wise? Did you want to hit uh tell everyone about those wave runners real quick? Uh yeah, the wave runners. Uh Thomas Yee actually hit me up and said he would uh take them from me if I didn't like them. Uh currently 10 and a half was the was what I went because they always say Yeezys, you know, go up half size. Yep. And uh, you know, if, especially with the insole. And so my first two pairs, my first one was just a resale. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I wanted to make some money. I got the wave runners like really early, sold them immediately, sold them even before I got them in hand. That was the first time I ever done that. That was the last time uh, because I got scared because they took like three days extra <laughs> to get them in hand before I could ship them out. Um, but it was fine. StockX didn't hit me, you know, for any penalties or anything. But uh, the second pair was when we were doing the cast. Remember, it was a live cop on the cast. And when Adidas did like this, you know, they – you got this reserve status to be able to go into the app and buy them. Well, that's exactly what this last one was. So this last restock was a reserve as well. So what I found with the 10 and a halfs, um, I tried to wear them, you know, I put them on and I just had so much breathing room in there. So I was like, man, fuck, this is, this shoe sucks. This shoe's old, I, I, old man looking. I can't, I can't do this. It's too big. Whatever. It looked like a stomper on my foot. So sold it, uh, made like, I think I made 70 bucks on the second, the second time I made like, a hundred and almost 200 on the first, first time I sold them. Cause I had them really early and this go around, I went instead of 10 and a half, I went true to size my 10, my size 10 and they fit perfect dude with the insole. They wow. fit premium. I really like them. And I think I might hold on to this pair. I really, I really do. Finally, um, huh? Well, Cinderella finally, action. Man, little, little Cinderella finally found that slipper that fits. Um, so I, I really like them and I think, I think I might rock these, man. It'll be the first Yeezy that I've ever kept the insole in. I have literally taken the insole out of everything. My five hundreds, my three fifties, my three eighties. Uh, but this one, um, it's Cinderella fit with the insole. So I really like them. So I think I'm going to keep them. That being said, I know my bad, I'm muted. sorry. No, it's all good. There, you just muted you yourself. Go. I, I was just trying to change my camera view so I could see everybody. Here we go. Oh, gotcha. Before we wrap this up, I think there was just one other sneaker that really caught my eye. We don't have a release date. It's uh, supposed to release summer of 2020. That's all we know so far. And with Nike and all these other companies really getting behind with the releases and production and, you know, you have retailers shutting down. Um, I do want to talk about this. Have you heard and have you seen the Ben and Jerry's dunk called the Chunky Dunky? Oh, yeah, 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 dude. Those what are. Do you, uh, what do you think about this shoe? The concept is really cool. I, I mean, so it's too. not like a shoe that I. It's not a must-have. It's not a shoe that I think is like going to be the craziest like on feet. But it's just right. a very cool shoe as far as the detailing from the the dripping ice cream swoosh to the font that Ben and Jerry uses on the back of it to the cow the hair. Nike. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Everything is just very well done, detail-wise. So it's not yeah, a shoe I like agree. I need to rock, but it's a shoe like I would just, if I can get lucky, it's a shoe that I'd like to just have in the collection. It's really cool. Very well. Yeah, done. I think, I think the materials look uh, really nice. I mean, that, that cow, <laughs> that cow hide on there just looks super sick. Of course, they're giving you multiple laces. you got the white, the green and the yellow. I mean, you have like the tie dye looking uh, on the inside of the shoe. Again, you've got the cow hide on the tongue. You've got the Nike SB and it says chunky donkey underneath conceptually this might be i mean you know dunks are notorious for this like years ago i mean i think that's the stories behind the dunks have always been incredible and that as a collector 
I just didn't really like dunks that much. I still don't like dunks that much. That's why I only have like four, five pairs of dunks. Um, I just, I'm not, I don't need every dunk. They're just not the most comfortable. I'd rather wear a boost or I'd rather wear an Air Max 90 or something. But that being said, conceptually, I just think they hit it out of the park on this one. I really, really believe so. The only thing they could have done extra is maybe something on the box as a collector that I am, but they are using that multicolored dunk SB box that we've seen Travis is in. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. seen a couple yeah. others. But, uh, you know, and I think that matches because of the colorway on this shoe. But, uh, I mean, I think this is this is absolutely one for the collection, and, and I, I would love I, – I, w- I would pay resale for this. I think my max on this one is probably – somewhere around that $300. If I go over $300, I, I, I think, I think if that's what it takes to, to, to buy this one, I think I'm probably out, but I would pay 300 for this. I don't know that I pay any more than that resale. I wish, uh, dude, what if it came in like a super sick, like, uh, big Ben and Jerry's carton, like of ice cream. Oh, 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 what if it came God. inside that, like specially packed inside there? Oh, it was I'm, like, I'm that paying, was the shoe box. I'm paying five, five, for that 50. one. I'm paying five five fifty all day. <laughs> Give me that. That's shit. it. Five fifty. Oh, that thing's going for over a rack for sure. <laughs> that that, that thing's like a cool that. G. Yeah. Oh, no dude, doubt. if it was an ice cream tub that the shoes, the dunks were in when you got them, you open that up. Bro. Or or check this out. Like if they did a release, like a special release with that box, that cart yeah. box, uh, like at Select Ben and Jerry's. Like if we, oh. if we didn't have the stupid Rona shit, and they did it at Select Ben and Jerry's, dude. Oh my God, that would that would be fire. How cool would it be if they put select, they put, uh, they sold Ben and Jerry's ice creams and at the bottom of every tub, once you eat through the bottom, that tells you if you're an instant winner and you win a special pair of those or a couple special pairs of those. Oh, that'd be cool too. Yeah. It's like Wonka golden ticket style. God, Nike needs to call us. What are they doing? That'd be dope. That'd be really dope. Cause that's nothing that right there. That's nothing you can, you have to do outside the order with quarantine. That could just be a fun giveaway. Oh yeah. No shit to cause hysteria at your local grocery store over Ben and Jerry's instead of toilet paper. Yeah. Or maybe, yeah, maybe they do that same thing and just do curbside at Ben and Jerry's at your local Mm. Ben and Jerry's. You do curbside pickup for your dunks. If you won, if your number was selected based off of the the tub that you bought, (laughs) that's tight. That'd be fresh. Speaking of sales systems, neighborhood said, I just want to vent about how kith drops are impossible. They need a new system. I have better luck on Supreme. Yeah, I a, uh, I, I've never copped off Kith. I've never once. Every time I've tried, never even close. Never close. Here's what, here's so I would what agree I would with say. that. Yeah, a man close to me. I won't. Uh, I won't uh, give him the shine because I don't know if it's negative or not. But uh, a wise man once told me that Kith actually backdoors a lot of their website stock, and but even before they load it on the website, so it's not like traditional backdooring. It's like they have these other companies and these like other accounts that they basically sell their stock levels to. So I guess it's backdooring. Yeah, let me just call it. It's backdooring. So they sell their stock levels to some of these entities that they are already teamed up with and then throw it on the website. It's already sold out or it sells out immediately because they had like just a couple pairs or a couple shirts or whatever. Um, so it sounds like the research that I've heard, Kith does a lot of like that back that back room, that back during those back accounts where they that back, sell back a lot during. Of, yeah, for sure. Where they actually have these accounts that they're teamed up with and they that Chris Berman back during. For sure. Back, 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 back. Yeah. So they do a lot of that, it sounds like. So okay. I didn't really know that, but uh, a wise man put me on that. So yeah, if you're if you're if you don't have a bot and you're on Kith Drops, number one, you don't really have a chance. I mean, I've I've caught manual shit every once in a while, but Typically, they the stock is already sold from what I hear. So, uh, I'll just wrap this up because we're talking about shoe boxes. Taylor Toadvine, I won a battle with my wife and got the cases in my closet. Now he's talking about these plastic cases. And the first thing she asks when she comes in is, "Now you can get rid of all the shoe boxes?" No, I'm going <laughs> to come home one day <laughs> devastated. He thinks she's going to no throw shit. out all the shoe boxes. Oh, that'd be the worst. Oh my god, that'd be a nightmare, bro. That would some be an these, absolute nightmare. Some of these shoes that I have in here uh, that are grails, like... If Robin just threw your boxes out, could you imagine? Oh, my God, dude. Oh. I don't even want to imagine what that combo would be like. Oh, dude, dude, dude there wouldn't be a combo. It would be over. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, she'd be lucky if she didn't. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I don't want to talk about it. That, There'd be, be two hits. Her... <laughs> 
her hitting my bo- her hitting my boxes and my bo- her hitting the floor. I don't know. Never mind. <laughs> Something <laughs> like that. I messed it all up. Didn't even make any damn sense. That means we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to get some food. We haven't eaten dinner yet. Yeah, we're two hours and 13 in. All the right, lights fellas. are all going down. Everybody's in the dark now. I know. I, I just opened <laughs> the max blinds I could so I can get the sunset coming down in front of me in here. Yeah. And I got Elton John playing in my headphones. Don't let the sun go down on me. It's a beautiful <laughs> sight. Uh, fellas, I guess we'll see you guys on Thursday. Um, yeah, I'll keep you updated on the job search and everything else that's going on. And uh, we'll continue to move forward through this crazy time. Uh, hopefully together. I know a lot of people are like, yeah, we got to keep the cast at least one day a week. Everything We're going to do what we can. I know I'm yeah. going to do what I can. Um, but at the same time, you know, if people get busy, if Jalal's doing another job, if Dow's doing another job, if I'm doing another job, whatever, I can't expect yeah. people to do this as a hobby either, you know, because right. it takes right. time and people need time to make money, especially these days more than ever. So yeah. that's, uh, that's kind of how it goes down. Yeah, and if you feel um, as good on the way out, make sure to hit that like button. That uh, that sure helps out a lot if you can. Yep, franchise, you got the live stream, so whenever you're ready, because I I gave the uh, the ownership to you. Oh, you did. I love when you do that. <laughs> I don't know how to. Uh, what do I do? Um, it should be on the bottom right. Maybe it says more, and then I think you can hit end live stream. Or... I'm in like a uh, not on the on the computer, right? Not in the uh, the meeting room. I think you could do it on your phone too. Or are you on the computer or on your phone? I'm on the computer, but yeah, uh, it should be on the bottom right then. <clears throat> and real quick, uh, neighborhood says job search, no more teaching. So he must have got in late. Oh, neighborhood. Well, I'm trying to end the stream, bro. I'll catch you up. Uh, so you don't have to go back, bro. Let's scrub the uh, let's scrub the vid, bro. Scrub the vid. So, so yeah, the school is uh, they've gone 100 percent online. The school's online only. And uh, sorry, I heard some yelling outside. This, it's the, it's the, I think we're getting some bread. If you're picking up what I'm putting down. Oh, nice. Anyways, uh, <laughs> the school is going all online. And so they, all the campuses throughout the country are now doing online classes. And they've only retained a certain amount of instructor, a certain amount of tenured instructors to teach all of the classes now so it's not to say i couldn't get my job back when all this goes but currently no job okay i didn't even, i didn't know that was the situation i thought they were still trying to go in person and you weren't willing no. to do that anymore so. no no that's the new that's what they've come out so last week when i didn't go in that was you know everyone else it was the final straw they had to go to the system yeah. so that's what's going on so everyone's kind of just in limbo. Sorry, I was talking and telling the story and still not ending the show. Uh, how? Yeah, I don't see it. Hold on, I'll do it. I'll try it on my phone. Because I can't. Can you, uh, give me, can you give me ownership and I can do it? How do I do that? Even. <laughs> I don't know. What happened was I was on my laptop and I um, switched to my phone and it gave one of you guys the the control. Okay, let me see. So if I'm Maybe on the if video we all now, just close the app, it'll go away. <laughs> or you could end the live, the stream on YouTube. How do you do it from your phone? No. Um, I just see like three dots on the bottom right of my screen. I think we are in different screens. Like when we go the live, because I show that mine shows this. Oh, hold up. Let me go to the live control room now. That's probably the issue. I'm going into the live control room to figure it out. It's loading. Events. I think you could go offline on YouTube anyways, right? Oh, yeah. If I just close it out. Yeah. Yeah. So if I just close this out, it'll go offline. Uh, You might have to. I don't know how you go offline on your control room. Jeez. No, that's what I'm saying. If I don't, I'm not in the control room. I just close the whole thing. I don't know. I don't know if that'll work. Yeah, this is. Oh, dang it. Hold on. You guys can just leave the meeting and it'll give me the ownership and I'll end it. <laughs> leave the meeting on where? <laughs> just hit leave meeting. Is this like dealing with a five year old? I don't even know. <laughs> leave meeting on my on my uh on your phone, yeah. Top right. Oh, on my phone. Thank you. <laughs> Con Lee says, What I miss? <laughs> the whole show, dog. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Bye, Damn, I'm leaving God the Lee. meeting. 